Yeah, well done. Uh, very good afternoon. And welcome to the season opener of the Alinta Energy Gippsland League. You can find us live this afternoon right on TRFM across Gippsland and the Valley from the Bansdale City Oval today. It is the Bansdale Redlegs taking on the Tarelga Maroons and we look forward to a massive season in 2024. What shapes to be very even and these two sides, while Bansdale certainly have recruited well in the off-season, they've gone out and targeted particular players for particular positions that they had a little bit of a lack of depth in last year and I think they will be one of our big improvers. The Maroons, they've lost a lot of experience, you can see by their outs, but their young, enthusiasm side, led by the absolute star of the competition in Ty Hurrigan, their captain for season 2024. They'll be full of run on this big open ground here at the Bansdale City Oval. It's great to have your company. My name's Daryl Cooling for Gippsland Live. It is all thanks to Harvey Norman Electrical Gippsland. Joining me, my co-caller this afternoon, is Rob Popplestone. Poppy, how are you, mate? Going good, thank you, Scott. Uh, Sorry, that's not a great way to start this. I've got to press that button down. <laughs> Going well. Uh, no, no, look, I'm going really well. Thank you, Scud. Um, g'day, Gippsland. Hope you're enjoying what is a beautiful weekend for Easter. Uh, stay safe in the roads. We'll say that all afternoon. That's the most important thing. And if you're on the roads and in the area, as Scud pointed out earlier, this would be an ideal spot to spend the afternoon. No question. Absolutely. And the crowd is building very nicely as well. Special comments this afternoon. All thanks to Carpet Country, helping dreams become a reality since 1981. His name is Nick Boxer Lachino. Back again. We tried to get rid of him. But he's hanging around like... What are they trying to get rid of me for? Uh, there's a whole... We love you, Boxer. Welcome it's back. It's great to be back, Scott, and uh, been looking forward to this day for a little while now, and it's good to be back with the team. My second family, uh, we'll call it, but because you're the pain in the backside, <laughs> brother, I always had Poppy. He's had a tough afternoon. He's put hairspray in his armpits. He can't raise his arms more than his shoulders at the moment, and he's in a little bit of strife, Boxer. But he will give us the special comments this afternoon. Ground is looking an absolute treat. Yeah, conditions are perfect down here as well. And like uh, Poppy just said too, if you're in the car and you've got your arm and arm what to do this afternoon, get down to the uh, get down to Bansdale Rec Reserve here and uh, the City Oval and uh, watch uh, two good teams line up this afternoon. Number one stats man in the business. Uh, he's been here for 10 years plus. He's a little bit older than that, though. His name is Paul Carter. Paul, good afternoon to you. All thanks to Gippsland Isuzu Ute. Good afternoon, Daryl and listeners. And uh, Boxer and Poppy, it's really great to be back. And it's the, uh, what's it, the microclimate that we yes, used yeah. to talk about of uh, East Gippsland. Certainly on show today. The magnificent day, the magnificent oval. And we're looking for a really fast-paced and very entertaining game. Well, continue it, Paul. Who's going to win this season opener? And by how much? Uh, Bansdale's going to win it. I think Terrellgan's going to take a little while to cover the, their losses from the summer and before the, their teamwork uh, clicks together. And I'd say about 23 points. Poppy? Uh, look, I'm going to go for Terrellgan. I think youthful enthusiasm will carry this side a long, long way. They've got plenty of pace. They've got lots of open space. They've got some talented kids. There will be some mistakes. Uh, but I think this side is destined for bigger and better things. It might not be this season, but you will see glimpse and, uh, glimpses of brilliance that will indicate this side is capable of going all the way in the years ahead. I like uh, what I see uh, in pre-season, and I think we're going to see a bit of it this afternoon. Yeah, I'm going to go with Bansdale, you know, for a couple of reasons. Uh, 17 points think, for me. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, just the size difference in regards to bodies as well. Just yeah, look true. at the Bansdale side right now. I think it's going to take a little bit to combat there for the Tarelgan side too. And playing at home, uh, the deck's magnificent, and uh, they've got some really big players here. Uh, led by their coach, Logan Austin. For me, Bansdale, I think they'll do it comfortably uh, by 36 points. Ooh. Tell you what, one of their new recruits, Hugh Longbottom, is an absolute man mountain standing at centre-half back. In the middle of the ground, though, it will be Ethan East up against Jacob Van Awarden, the two ruckmen. A good matchup will be Mitchell for the Red Legs and Louis D'Angelo. And to kick things off in the Alinta Energy Gippsland League, the umpire throws it up and East will get the first tap down. Will Mitchell, first handball out wide. He got it to Clay and now a left foot kick inside, just inside the forward 50, came from one of their new recruits, 
looks to be Blenheim. Yeah. And we have it out of bounds on the full, though, Pop. We do indeed. So Tarolgan defensive 50, grandstand side, and the Maroons kicking to the right of radio. Come along the line, looking for a teammate. Can't, rode beautifully. Ground level by the home side. The player was Blenheim. He couldn't take the ball cleanly. Yeah, he finds itself over the boundary line again. He looks really sharp. Left footer as well. Throws the body around too. And uh, just going to see some big things from him. When you know, you know, yeah. isn't it, Boxer? Yeah. And we've had two touches inside the first 40 seconds of play. East again, this time taps it down. There's Blenheim. Couldn't get this one. Other one there was Lockie Byrne-Jones, and the umpire will come in. Critical thing today, too, for both sides with their rotations as well, Scud. A warm day as well. East just thumps it towards the top of the 50. A big fist inside it goes. There's Cunico for the Maroons. Handball over the top. Missed the target at ground level. Carstens goes in hard. Try to kick it off the ground there. It was Logan Austin who's gone forward. And, Logan, you were on my Christmas card list. You're now off it. <laughs> you can see the difference in height now, too. With the, uh, yeah. Without Peter Strong uh, in this Terralgan side, Ethan East has been dominating already early in this game in the ruck. All right, let's see what he can do here, Big Max East. And he gets another tap, goes looking at the back. A set play, McMahon, grand level, quick kick. Hamilton takes ball. He's taken equally as well. That was time that was taken by Lando. And there'll be a ball up around about the left half forward flank Bensdale into attack he's a big unit too Lando as well so they've really recruited well like Scott said before the game first quarter action all thanks to Virtue Holmes here's D'Angelo through nice. some traffic sold it nicely the right foot kick though just at the toes there of big Dylan Lopez he had his arm tackled couldn't quite get the ball out Tapped off the ground by Hamilton. An underground handball. The red legs are away. And Vickery is the one. Left foot kick out in the front there. This time it's Jesse Bills. Left it behind. Marsh just has to handle it to himself. Bills does well. And then delivers nicely. And found the coach Austin, who the umpire said didn't take the mark. And he got absolutely crunched. And now they give him a free kick for over the shoulder. Interesting matchup too. Logan and Hurrigan go head to head. Austin in towards. Nice. Nicely done. And it's Tyrone Reese who takes the mark in the forward pocket for the Red Legs. Good smart play then too by the coach. He knew that they had the, the Maroons flat footed with the free kick and wondering what happened. Uh, he moved it really quick and the kick was great into space and uh, nice little grab there by Reese. Two and a half minutes in. Runs around as they always do. Tries to get it working back from right to left. Can't do so. And didn't work it enough. It's a minor score for the first time on the Virtue Home scoreboard. On the Virtue Home scoreboard, that is one behind, one point to Bernstar. Coming up to the three-minute mark of this first quarter. All right, Ty Harrigan, the captain, newly appointed for the Maroons. And well, very well done, too. Yeah, it is, too. A, a consistent player, high quality. Uh, could be playing at an even higher level. Has had opportunity before, but he's quite happy to stay in his hometown. And... Although he's a long way from home today, he's hoping that his captaincy gets off to a flying start. Goes towards the outer side of the ground. Cade Marsh was at the target, didn't find that target. It actually found the boundary line, basically near the intersection of Ford 50 and boundary for the home side. Boxer, did you have some news for us, uh, injury front uh, before the game even started? Get to that in a moment as the ball comes back into play. Austin squeezes the handball out to Mitchell. Goes backwards by hand. His lucky cloak. Inside forward 50 he goes. Danger spot. Hurrigan just got through his legs. Nice little tap by Reese. Comes out. Kick around the body by Tate Clay, the youngster. And misses. Another minor score. Jo Two just behinds, two points, Bairnsdale. Virtual home scoreboard, almost four minutes played. Just prior to the injury, though, too, as well, the pressure of is fantastic at the moment, too. They're up and about. They're pretty pretty excited the way they play, and at the moment, really forcing the error uh, to the Maroons as well. All right, so we're going to have Jackson McMahon to bring this ball back into play. Probably Hurrigan might be one of his options. So he goes to the Hamilton boys on the grandstand side. There's either Roy. You reckon they'll go for the taller? Tom Hamilton <laughs> didn't yeah. quite get to the target. And now at ground level, they've got the numbers, Maroons, and they need to weave their way through a bunch oh, of Pensdale players, and they run into trouble. And in fact, a free kick against Chance Daltrey will go the way of Bensdale. Didn't have much chance to get rid of that ball, but Jesse Bills made hard work for him and now kicks inside forward 50. It's all the red legs in the opening minutes of this first quarter. The season opener, Bensdale v Terrelgan. Two behinds, as you heard from Paul Carter a moment ago, to the home side, Bensdale. Trollgan yet to score, and even yet to look like scoring. 30 metres out from their goal. D'Angelo does well. Tackled quickly by Byrne Jones. There'll be a free kick to D'Angelo. It was over the shoulder. And in his defensive back pocket, will look to switch it. Back to the face of the goals. It goes in the way of Little. He gets it further out wide. Can't wow. keep it in the field of play. Kicks it out of bounds on the full. That's that pressure again too, Scud. They've really forced them deep and uh, the kick wasn't great. And a uh, little bit of pressure there from the coach, Logan Austin. He's going to line up in a really hard pocket here. 
uh, at the City Oval. He's probably a big chance here. To More than through. capable. Yep, they lead by two points. They've had it all inside their forward 50 for the first five minutes of play. He's going to go with a banana from the boundary line. Logan Austin puts it across the face and out of bounds on the full on the other side. So just pre uh, the game in the warm-up there too, Ricky Tatnell come off uh, the Bansdale side. It looks like he might have done the webbing in his hand, but he's back out there and uh, ready to play again. OK, McMahon brings the ball back into play. Three shots at goal, three behinds. Finds Connor Ambler, defensive 50, out of side of the ground. So we've played only a few minutes. Uh, but out the, the, the early signs were that it's pretty... Accomplished looking Bensdale side. Early minutes, obviously. Long way to go. And here we go right now. It's Cunico grabs the ball. They got some runners and it's Ambler again. The kick not great. In fact, poor. A turnover. Goes away of Kieran Vickery. Halfback flank. Right halfback flank for the Red Legs. And he'll sort of tease the corridor and find his big ruckman in Ethan East. Kicks around the body. Logan Austin's got over the backside. And over the top, nicely done. Austin and Hurrigan is the match-up, and Austin was too good on that occasion. It was a good kick by Ethan East as well. Nice, long penetration. That's why it's a really unusual match-up too, because we know that Hurrigan likes to get on his own and intercept Mark uh, all afternoon to play one-on-one. -on -one. He was just caught out then too. He gave him three or four metres in the height of Austin. Uh, he was never going to get back in time to mark that. No Braden McCary for the Red Legs today. And they've still got a couple out as well. Xavier Richards is another one that's out. So Austin goes forward. And he's having another shot on goal. This one from a better angle than before. Right foot likes it off the boot. Celebrates quickly. And the first goal of 2024 goes to the coach of the Red Legs in Logan Austin. What's been really good about Bensdale boys is the fact that they're, when they're, the ball's inside their forward 50, they really zone hard and they push their players in deep to make sure the ball doesn't come out easy. But what I did like before this goal was kicked, once the ball did rebound back out and the Maroons had control, their work rate back to force that error. And they saw the short kick, they inter intercepted, and it was a great goal to, to Logan Austin. And on the seven, at the seven-minute mark of the first quarter in the Virtual Homes, Scoreboard, the bands are one, two, eight. Sherelgan yet to go inside their forward 50. Back in the middle they go. East will stay in there. Hamilton will do the ruck duties now for the Maroons. East, though, got up on his own. Down to Mitchell. Over the top now. This one is to McKenna. Kicks around the body. Nicely marked there by Daw. Gives a handball back to McKenna. Over the top now to take Clay. The left footer. Inside forward 50. Hurrigan peels off. And takes the uncontested mark, quickly switches it out wide, and he can find Huey Dunbar. He does too. Still in defensive 50. Terrellgan under all sorts of pressure. Need to just show a bit of patience. They do. They go short to Marsh, who in turn goes short also and finds Cunico, who's picked up his third or fourth touch in the opening minutes of this first quarter. He gives ground, goes back into the Ford 50 of Bensdale, where Cade Marsh will now try to change direction. The kick will need to be pinpoint perfect. It's not quite. Tate Marsh was the player he was aiming for, but Tate was beaten to the ball by the boundary, just 30 metres from Bensdale's goal. That's twice that's happened to the side now too. Uh, they've just had chipping around, but what they've done is Bensdale forcing the error because he's really squeezing inside 50 and pushing him in deep. First quarter action thanks to Virtue Homes. Ball comes back into the field of play. No one can get it at ground level. Head over there was Cunico. Gave it to Marsh. That was Tate. Right foot kick. Clearing outside. Looking for Daltrey. And couldn't complete the mark. We had a boundary throw in. They've gained a few metres, the Maroons. They need a reset, but really hasn't gone... Well, uh, hasn't gone inside forward 50, has it, for the Maroons as yet? Maybe no. once? No, just. no, no it came, nope. came up short. So ball thrown back in. Half forward line for Bensdale. Hamilton over the top, got the tap, but it's the red legs in numbers around the ball that's winning the contest. Hamilton comes in to lend a hand, does feed it off nicely. Can they find a teammate in the Oakleys? They can't. He applies the tackle on uh, McKenna. That's Link McKenna, bottom of the pack. A smooth, moving left footer. I like the way he looks and moves. He good, talented player. They seem to have more than a handful. Good tackle. Red legs dispose of the ball fairly. Can they dance around the Maroons? Now they've got some room to move. Neoclis draws the player, feeds it off. D'Angelo oh. likes to run. The kick was poor. Cunico dodges around one, two. Oh. Sidesteps beautifully. He settles. Can he find a man? He can, Laprise. 45 degree angle, 30 metres out. The best chance. Yep. Their first chance. Great the afternoon. Great That's composure. Just, fantastic composure too. Just that overlap run too then too. And D'Angelo's been everything in everything so far in this game. It was just good that Neoclis just took his time to draw that player. 
gave him space. The kick wasn't great going inside 50, but Cunico's skills, he started the game absolutely brilliantly. Like all players, forwards especially, they need one early for their confidence. Laprise, 30 metres out. Nice kick off the boot. Thank you very much. The Maroons are on the board. The first of season 2024. Yeah, that was a fantastic kick, Pop, and you're definitely right then too when forwards had that early one for that confidence building. And it was great composure just by Cunico to hit up Laprez, who was on his own in that pocket. And it is a tough pocket here as well. So a really good start there, really good signs there for, for the Maroons. They've just got to build on this now as well and uh, settle into the game. One entry into the forward 50 is one goal for the Trelgan team on the virtual home scoreboard. One goal straight six. Still trailing by two points. Bands are one, two, eight. Of course, you're listening to Gippsland Live. All thanks to Harvey Norman Electrical Gippsland. It is the first quarter of this season opener. East will continue the ruck duties. Hamilton tapped it down to D'Angelo nicely. Back to Neoclius. And then got crunched and lost the footy. Daltrey will have to come in and help. Couldn't get the footy. Squeeze it out to Mitchell. Good tackle by Neoclius. Play on to the umpire. Skolters now with his left foot nice. kick. A chiselling one. And finds Connor Ambler. Inboard they go by foot. D'Angelo will mark. Half forward flank 55 metres out from goal. Again they go inside 50. His kicks have been off just to start with. Coming the other direction there was Dorr. They get a handle over the top. The run now comes from Lando. Right foot kick. The new recruit kicks it a half forward. East puts one hand out. Little goes to ground. Strong tackle by East. The Maroons have got some numbers. Skolters was one of those. Tries to get a handball out. He got one high over the shoulder and will win himself the free kick. So D'Angelo on two occasions, he's laid back on his kicks a touch, a little bit too casual, a bit yeah. too clever. Needs to get his head over the ball, Nick Luchino, as he's going forward 50 to find a man. He certainly does. Skulters kicks it out wide and can find Connor Little. It's a slow play, only a just went the 15 metres required. Kicks down the wing area. Nice. Target out there, couldn't quite complete the mark was Lucas Tripodi. D'Angelo roved it well, took on the tackler, got his boot to ball. Inside forward 50, Cuda goes up forward again, tackled by Tatnell. Umpire said play on, Cloak did well at ground level. Gave a handball off to Blenheim and he kicked it out wide to some open space. Tapping it forward out there, looks to come the other direction was McKenna. He tries to get it backwards to Vickery. Kick around the body's nicely done and can find the first gamer in Matthew Hamilton for the red legs. All right, Matty Hamilton, left foot, goes towards the outer side. He's got a runner, nicely done. A nice lead, nice take. Harvey it is. Wearing number 19 today, is that right? Yep. Cooper Harvey with a 19. Link McKenna now has the ball. Got on the end of that kick from Cooper Harvey. Gonna and he's back. just short of half forward. And now, as you heard Scud say, he's got it back. And goes inside Ford 50. The kick was poor, though. Need better than that. The mark was taken by Tom Hamilton, who looks as though he may be playing defensive 50, or is he rucking that Maybe at rolling this stage? Back, yep. Might be rolling back a bit. So goes towards the outer side. And is that in the Oakleyus with the ball, or Chance Daltrey? It is Chance who finds Laprise, who's worked hard up the ground. Usually find him about half forward. He's grabbed a mark at half back. The kick was poor, and he turned it over to Longbottom. Longbottom plays on, goes along the line. Gee, there's some poor skills now because Hamilton has got on the end of Longbottom's kick and said thank you very much, and he goes short now and finds Daltrey. So out of wing. Margin sits at two points in favour of the red legs. Kicks to half forward. Low press can take the mark. Rolls around on the right foot. Inside towards Cunico. Nice. Just got some separation from Stewart and was able to elevate and take a chest mark directly in front. Will kick from 45 box. Jeez, he's hurting Stewart too as well. And if that's just the footy smarts that Cunico's got. Like, he's just been dangerous forward. If they get the ball inside 50... Bit of a move this year. I like year. this move. I like yeah. it. Uh, he did start in the middle, but he's once, once he's gone forward, he's set one up, and now he's going for he his He looks first. comfortable there, doesn't yep. he? He does. Presents well. Let's see what the finish is like as they make a plethora of changes on the bench both sides. Cunico, 45 metres out. Oh, oh, oh. If you don't mind, over the goal umpire's head. And we spoke about where the goal is going to come from. Well, the big move is Kinnico goes forward and he's got one early. We, we just spoke about skill level because obviously yes. we've seen both sides uh, really fumble with the ball at the moment. But it's just where Terrellgan now has started to settle a little bit. Their short game wasn't working really well. And you can just see when Laprise got on his wheels, he got the ball inside 50 quickly uh, and he, he put the, the pressure of uh, uh, the defensive pressure back on Bansdale and uh, it was a great finish there by Kinnico. And uh, Terrellgan hit the front at the 15-minute mark of the first quarter. Virtual home scoreboard. Terrellgan are two goals straight, 12. Leading Bansdale, 1-2-8. All right, so back in the centre of 
the Bensdale City Oval. Oh, Hamilton got the tap down, but gave it to his opposing Ruckman, who cleared the area inside Ford 50 and falls in the arms of Josh Schultz. Well, Schultz on that left leg can be dangerous. The oh. kick was poor again. We've seen that on three occasions yep. in defensive 50. They've chose to go laterally. It's gone off the side of the boot once out of bounds on the full and twice over the boundary line for a boundary throw-in. Bit of nerves. It's, uh, nerves. Yeah. Why do you actually even choose that kick when you've got a player 10 metres away? All right. Ball comes back in. Big thump forward again by East. Well rove there by Carstens. Goes back to hand there to Blenheim. Round the body kick to a hot spot. Coming out to meet it on this occasion with a head over the footy. Nicely done there. It was McDonald for the Maroons. Clearing kick out to Scandrit. Has one go. Couldn't quite get it. Now he burns. Can he hit the target in Cunico? Umpire says no. It's out of bounds on the full. Oof. Wasn't much in it. Longbottom no. will take the free kick. I tell you what, when they have got space, they look good, Trelgan. Yeah. They just need space. And Bensdale to date have been closing up most gaps. Long bottom, right foot kick down the line. McKenna dropped the mark that he normally takes. Tyrone Reese at ground level. On the tackler. Gave a handball back to McKenna. His kick goes straight up and down. And it's going to go out of bounds right in front of the huge crowd that is built here at the Bensdale City Oval. And... It comes back in board now for the Maroons yeah, through Hamilton Skoltz. to Skolters. And Skolters now feeds it off to his teammate in Marsh. Marsh goes over the top. Skolts the one, two. Nicely done. Nice little sidestep. Cooper Brown, they feed it off. They're running in numbers. They're looking oh. good. McMahon tackled beautifully. And the free kick will go Bensdale's way, the way of Tyrone Reese. A brilliant tackle there by Reese. He just uh, he lowered the hips and went bang. Yeah. So here we go, Bensdale now, through the corridor. The kick was a tumbling punt inside forward 50. Taken ball and all was Dora, who got a handball out, couldn't find a teammate, good numbers in the white. That is the maroon and white, and they've got the numbers to work it out of defensive 50. The kick Dunbar. is a torpedo from a standing start and lands a foot or two inside the boundary line, and there'll be a boundary throw in left I, half forward I, flank. I, I ben like Stahl into attack. I like how Tarragon now have just fine-tuned what their matchups look like down back, and it's really, really making a difference. Boxer, just got a quick one for you. I want you to find Dan McKenna was named. Uh, we had him on our retired list. I uh, haven't quite seen him as yet, and I've just got a feeling he's uh, in casual clothes on the bench. So let's have a look at that one. From this stoppage, Vern Jones got well, ran down from tackled. behind. That was from Williton. Gee, got some pace, Williton. He certainly has, and might be pint size, but so is Lockie Vern Jones. Ball up again. Hamilton over the top. Taps it straight down to Tyron Reese. His high kick inside forward 50. Defenders are under a bit of pressure. Good spoil by Hurrigan. Grand level Castings was there. Nicely done by Halley Burton. Got tackled though quickly by Max East. Inside the forward 50. The umpire says a free kick is going to go Bairnsdale's way. I didn't see what it was for. Is it going to go to East or it might go to Bills? In the end it goes to Jesse Bills. So he's saying that he... But pulled the ball back into play, did he? Or I think it was for holding the ball, perhaps. Yeah. Jumped on it and then didn't get rid of it. So Jesse Bills, good to see the two youngsters fighting over that one as well. Max East and Jesse Bills. And Bills will come in. 30 metres out on its way. Ooh. It's going to hit the upright. Yep. Slams into the top of the post on the Virtue Home scoreboard at the 18 and a half minute mark. Take through. Uh, Ben's under one goal, three, nine. Uh, trailing by three points over Trogon. Two goals straight, 12. All right, McMahon's got a couple of short options here that hasn't gone off previously but this time it does so is that Harrigan left back pocket long yep. way away here is with the ball left back pocket not a lot of movement but he'll go long towards the outer side it's a two-on-one contest and Bensdale have the numbers and therefore have the ball and now they'll send the ball back into Ford 50. So, uh, McKenna watch here at the moment you can confirm he's definitely on the bench and Connor Little number 17 for Tarragon uh, has come into the game to replace McKenna. All right, so the ball now is going to be with Neoclius. Defensive 50, goes short. Call, oh, poor kick. Cut off nicely again, this time by Randall Stewart. From outside 50, goes to within 30. Out the back, he uh, flew high, couldn't get hands on the nicely ball. Nicely done, it. A clever kick forward or tap forward. And I tell you what, they've socked that ball through. Reese Carstairs, has he put a goal through? He has. And I tell you what, that have to be a contender for our Zambrero goal of the day. It's a beauty. It was an absolute ripper there, uh, Poppy. They had to work really hard for that goal, didn't they, Bansdale? Uh, Terrell just shifted the game into their way, but uh, the pressure again from up the field, they just kept it peppered inside 50, and they were rewarded with a great goal.
And the lead swings back at the 20 minute mark of the first quarter. In Bansdale are leading by three points on the virtual home scoreboard. 2 3 15 to two goals straight 12. I think it's fair to say that Bansdale have had all the play. Yes. Yeah. But in open play, Terrellgan look really good when they move it. So the key for this, for me, is for Terrellgan to move the football with pace but just to uh, be maybe a little bit steadier with the footy as again now D'Angelo gave the one two to Cunico and his left foot kick he's in the middle and now he kicks it inside forward 50 Vanna Warden front and square Neocleus tries to twist around one here's Willardon sidestep around another right foot check side there's a no touched and it's going to roll over on the last line of defence was Ricky Tatnell as the newcomer for Terrell and Liam Willerton nearly squeezed at home. It's a minor score. Margin now? It is two points in Ben Sale's favour. All right, Longbottom has the ball defensive 50. Comes grandstand side, or the commentary position side, finds Randall Stewart, who looks up ground. Not a lot of movement, so he actually goes backward 35 metres, but he finds a teammate in Ricky Tatnell, who then changes direction towards the outer side of the ground to Vickery, who turns and runs and gathers 15 metres before he kicks 40. Uh, Hamilton dropped what he should have taken, and he normally would, and it falls at the uh, bottom of the pack, and the first player there will be Will Mitchell, but it's kicked forward by Terrell, and inside forward 50 by Tom Hamilton, but only momentarily because, again, the Red Legs are working back nicely and making life hard for this visiting side. It went out of bounds on the full pop, so Bansdale had the free kick. So they give ground again and keep possession. This time, Vickery again. It's been a bit of a conduit for a change of direction. And they've got some space, grandstand side. They'll draw a player. Oh, how far? No, they'll dance around and then kick to space. The kick was a nice one. Dropping what he should have been taking and then taken by Hamilton. Oh, geez, I tell you what. 50-50 at best. He was thought to have been taken high by Josh Hamilton. The player I speak of was Randall Stewart, who goes inboard now. Yep. Finds Byron Vickery now on this occasion. Half-back flank for the red legs. He's turned it over, though. Josh Hamilton takes the mark. Quickly plays on. Low presses on his own at centre-half forward. It's an open forward line, but there's no Trelgan player down there. He slows it down, waits for the troops to arrive at the toes there of Neoclis, which isn't a bad option. Squeezes a handball out to Ambler on the boundary line, plays the team football oh. and finds Connor Scandrett directly in front. That's how you do it. Terrelgan, Connor Ambler could have blazed away, had a shot at goal, composed enough to hit up the target at centre at the forward, inside forward 50, directly in front. And Connor Scandrett waste no time to try and retain the lead, and he puts it over the goal umpire's head, and Connor Scandrick gets his first goal. Yes, yeah, Scott, I'm just keeping an eye on Logan Austin. He's been pretty filthy with a couple of the kicks that have gone his way so far, and it's been a result of a turnover. And I can guarantee you now the three goals that have come to Terrell are from Bansdale turnovers right now. And hopefully I'm right, and Paul Carter can tell me that I am. 100% box. Uh, so the, th the oh, fact oh. is I'm on. He's on. I'm yeah, on. You are. <laughs> <laughs> the fact is the box is on early. Yes, it's on. It's on. But uh, good a chance I'll stuff it up later on. Yeah, um, that's three three goals from set shots, and all of them have been from turnovers. And that takes uh, our third lead change for the game at the 23 minute mark of this first quarter on the virtual home scoreboard. Terrellgan 3 1 19, Bensdale 2 3 15. All right, we saw an absolute classic in the reserves with the home side Bensdale getting up by the single point. At the moment, there's three points the difference at senior level. Hamilton takes the ball out of the ruck, gives to Daltrey, standing start, gathers 55, goes to within 20 metres, front of the pack. We've got some numbers. Mar numbers. Can I get the ball out? They try to spit it out to a teammate. They can't. It's held in. The umpire will take control. 40 metres from Terrellgan's goals. 45 degree angle. And the visiting side, Terrellgan 3-1-19, as you heard from Paul Carter, leading Bensdale 2 4 16. Taking the ruck duties there was Scandrit. Taps it out to open space. Head over there was Blenheim. Got a handball now to Mitchell. He gets it further afield out to Vickery. Chips it towards the wing. Big pack will fly. Austin crunched into it. At ground level was Bills. Inside kick. Just sort of hit uh, Mitchell in the head. Good enough to get out of that. And a sweeping handball over the top. Byrne Jones was on the end of it. A neat little kick to Rees. He's Austin. got Austin sprinting inside forward 50. Wow, we. Work rate was 120% then, Boxer. Wow, we. He was in the contest here, and it was a fairly decent contest that he was in here. But he turned, he would have ran, what, 50 metres pop? Yep. Easy at full tilt for a guy who's 6 foot 4, 5. He made up incredible ground, and was, he's going to kick just outside of 50, which will be a big kick. He'd be, he's capable. He'd, he'd be he, blowing, though. Yeah, he's he'd capable. Be blowing. Captains lead well. Big moments for them all. Bowling club, the legendary sixth tap ever changing. We'll get to that in a moment. Boxers all over this one is Logan Austin will come in and look for Bensdale's third goal. It's a thumping kick. It's over the cross, the face. 
and Skelters will help it through for the Maroons. It's a minor score on your Virtue Home scoreboard. You can be inspired by Virtue Homes. It takes uh, Bands up at 2 4 16. They trail by uh, three points over at Trogan, who are 3 1 19. So McMahon now to bring the ball back into play. You normally see him through the midfield on a wing more often than not, but a more than capable utiliser of the ball goes towards the outer side. Can he find a teammate? He can't. Uh, Bensdale again with the numbers, ground level. It was Will Mitchell. Uh, he's caught with the ball. Play on is the call from the umpire. But the Black and Reds have got the numbers around and Tate Clay has a bit of a dip and sends them inside forward 50 for the home side within 30 metres. Nicely taken. The mark was taken by Skoltz. And he's been good down He mark. has been good. So now on that left leg, you look towards the outer side, 50 metres and all of that. Hamilton gets uh, hands to it. Just can't quite reel it in. Early part of the season, you'd expect... A little bit of work to be done. No matter how hard you train in the pre-season, the opening 15 or 20 minutes of a first game of the real stuff, especially in these sort of yeah. conditions, uh, can cost you. You'll be burning through the throat and the stomach and wondering whether you can get through a game. But you do find a way, and Terrellgan are trying to find a way through this defence. I reckon free, free kick, kick Terrellgan's way. Is it D'Angelo or Halle Burton that might be on the bottom of that? First one. Play on quickly. D'Angelo through McMahon. Run from full back line to half back line. Went searching for Josh Hamilton. Downfield. Uh, free kick downfield. Well, wow. that was fortuitous for Trolgan and bad play for Bensdale because the ball had found itself over the boundary line. And a 50-50 contest now goes the way of Terrelgan. And they'll go inside forward 50. They're looking for Laprise. Takes a mark. He stood and delivered. And I tell you what, given that his form early... For goal was a beauty. You'd be backing him in. A tight angle, the boundary to his left side, just two or three metres, and he'll kick from 35. At a different time last year when they were at full strength in the side they had last year, Terrellgan, Lepres found himself down back. So that was a th the first thought process. But I always have loved him forward. So Lepres now from 30. Difficult angle, make no mistake. The oh, oh goal up oh, high, wow. does not move. Dylan Lepray sticks up the finger. He should have stuck up two because he's got two and Terrelgan have got back the lead. Yeah, it was a great kick then too by Dylan. I think that what I like the fact that he kept he, he held his ground. He made his band stop uh, opponent uh, go at the ball uh, and he found himself reading it a lot better. His kicking's on this afternoon. And uh, Terrell can now go out to a nine-point lead. We're 27 minutes into the first quarter. Virtual home scoreboard, Terrell can 4-1-25, leading Bensdale 2-4-16. Well, great start for the Maroons, travelling away from their home ground in Terrell on a big Bensdale City Oval. It's just what they needed. The red legs, though, I sense in general play have probably had a little bit more of it, but they go again, the Maroons, and this time it is D'Angelo. Right foot kick, great one this time to Hamilton. Just, that was Josh, just got underneath it. Kieran Vickery, Vickery was there, kicked it off the ground. Mitchell's been busy, Look ran down pace. from behind, and Willardon gets his free kick. He's had a couple of those moments. Great pace. Gives a handball off to McMahon. Inboard again by hand to Hamilton. Out to the fat side. Daltrey's there can mark, 48 metres out. And we'll have another shot at goal. This is what I like about McMahon's game too. And we saw him play a lot of this last year off the half back. He gains yardage for you. He, he runs and carries and he gets the ball forward. So Not sure uh, Daltrey's got the distance. Dodge. Oh, no. From 51 metres. It's going to go long deep. It's not going to quite make the distance. It's rushed through. And it is a minor score. Virtue Home scoreboard this afternoon. Keep your eyes peeled for the Virtue Homes. New display home opening later this year. It's called the Marshall. Terrellgan 4 2 26, leading by 10 points over Bansdale 2 4 16. All right, the red legs to bring the ball back into play, and they'll do that through Longbottom, who chooses to go to the outer side. Nice long leg, but shepherding behind the play goes Terrellgan's way. Play on quickly, umpire says, go back behind the mark. The player with the ball was Tom Hamilton. He has the ball, left half forward flank. Maroon's just turning up the heat a touch. Dogtree on the end of it. Now, take That's a two. Free kick to Dill. Free kick off the ball. So it will go to Dylan Lopez. It's no. a free kick to Dylan Lopez for being blocked out of the contest. No, I don't right. think the, you're right, Box. Sorry about that. Just uh, correcting a few things there. But oh. So Chance Daltrey will take the ball. <laughs> Box has 100% dropped significantly to 72%. <laughs> Siren sounded. So Chance Daltrey with his side leading by nine points on the first quarter. Siren down. Big moment. It is a big moment. And he won't be able to run around. He won't. 45 metres out. Nice leg. Nice angle. Nice finish. No. Just to the left. Minor score to close things off, Paul Carter. 
4-3-27 Terrelgan, 11 point lead at quarter time over Bansale, 2 4 -16. An entertaining first quarter in the season opener of the Alinta Energy Gippsland League. Let's take a break, have a bit of a breath and uh, enjoy a drink or two. Of course, responsibly, uh, you are listening to a Gippsland Live on this wonderful Saturday afternoon up in East Gippsland. It's all thanks to Harvey Norman Electrical Gippsland. The Super Easter Sale is on now.
Well, Bansdale, that, outside of finals, that's probably one of the biggest yep. home and away huddles I've seen yep. uh, for a very, very long time. So well done to the Bansdale people to come down and support as you well. You get the sense that there yeah. is a little bit of excitement around the place. Yeah, I, and I just think I, what I expected from the first game, like Poppy was talking about skills, it's sort of like grand final, like um, sort of fumbles and mistakes. Yes. Everyone's pretty excited about getting the game going and, and, and getting a touch of the pill straight up. So conditions are perfect. Uh, you know, uh, you know, Terrell, to their credit, they really sharpened up. You know, they looked a bit uh, scratchy at the start. Then they got their skills right. They gained some yards off their half-back line, and they used the ball better inside 50 than what Bairnsdale did. Yeah, and Cunico looks as though he's fully fit. He's been having troubles yeah. of yeah. injuries yeah. over the last few yeah. seasons. This year, he looks good. touch wood, he looks as comfortable as I've ever seen him. And I love the move. He plays in the middle of the ground, and he goes forward. The second quarter for the Maui Racing Club is about to get underway. Hamilton and East will do the duties. Tap back from Hamilton, but it was picked off on that occasion by the youngster, uh, the newcomer. And they drive it inside forward 50. Careful. Yeah, that is 50. Logan, Logan, Logan. Absolutely crunch. They're going to go to him. Yeah, and so they should. Schultz goes to him. Standing the ground, though, did very well in that uh, back half was Connor Little. Yeah, look, there's look, there's two things to look at. Yes, it was a 50-metre penalty, but it was a 50-metre penalty. It's a reportable offence. He came in knees first. Okay. Came in knees first. The umpire saw it, thought it was warranted a 50. Well, why wouldn't warrant a report? Well, they attack by hand. They give it to Schultz, and Skulters goes inside. Top of the 50 it is. Doesn't quite get in there. At ground level is Halliburton. Closing quickly. Little kick off the ground. By Cloak, he cha- uh, that's Corbett, sorry, he goes now to Mitchell. His inboard handball back towards Austin, runs straight through two of them and says, get out of my way, gives it back to Corbett, back to Austin, and Austin's little chip kick and gets to Carstein's. And Carstein's will give a handball to Austin. He can tamble over the top now to a teammate. That was partially smothered. That was Max East. He gives it again by hands. Carstein on the boundary line, right foot kick to the goal line. It's rushed through. And it's a minor score, and Logan Austin is involved a number of times on that occasion. And on the East Club Eastwood Bairnsdale scoreboard, we have 2517 Bairnsdale trailing to Elgin 4327. And that's what you want to see from your skipper, yep. that sort of tough, determined play busting through packs. And I think earlier, it's just a mix of frustration, like the ball's been coming into that forward 50, and I think he's getting not in the way that he'd like. Um, and Tarogan are doing it a lot better, as they do right now through Dylan Lepreze. He's taken multiple marks and now sends the Maroons inside forward 50. Back of the pack, it's the Maroons again at ground level, overrunning the ball and, in actual fact, being beaten at the ball by the boundary. There'll be a boundary throwing just, what, 30 metres from Tarogan's goals, kicking to the left of Radio, the town end of Bensdale City Oval. I think they're just using the ball a lot better. Uh, it going inside 50 to Argon right now, which is making the big difference. So Vanna Warden to do the ruck, but he's got a hand on it. Vanna Warden had to do a little bit of groundwork, gets it to Neoclea, snap around the body on a tightish angle, can't get it to come around enough. Minor score. Margin now is at 11 points on the Club Eastwood scoreboard box. It was a uh, great pickup now. This has been going under the radar a little bit too. Uh, his ball movement inside 50 and his groundwork inside forward 50 has been tremendous. Kieran Vickery will come to the near side. The change room side of the ground. Checks his kick and hits up Reese. In his defensive 50 for the red legs. They trail at the moment by 11 points. So Tarogan are really pressing forward. All 36 players forward of centre. And so Bensdale need to show a bit of patience here and thread their way through. Lando with the ball now. He's inside defensive 50. He'll run outside defensive 50 and try to find a gap. He won't. It spills to ground. McDonald was a player oh. who uh, caused the contest. It comes over the top now. McDonald needs to hit the ball hard or man. And he chose man, which is fine. And the ball spills over the boundary line. And this nice is, work. This is what we see now. Hurrigan's now on the on the true wing. He's left Logan Austin on his own there, and Shoulders had to take the man as well. So it's just very dangerous play there. It Hurrigan. is, but he's putting some pressure on Austin to follow him up the ground. Uh, free kick behind play. Bensdale's way. The ruck contest goes the way of Ethan East. He's inboard. He's got a number of options, and he finds one of those in Tyran Reese. Good to see him back. Only played a handful of games last year due to uh, some long-term injuries. So good to see Tyrone back. Reese goes long. Can oh. he find? It's a risky kick, and I tell you what, it didn't pay off because Cunico added some pressure to Lachlan Byrne Jones and found the boundary line. Ethan East would have been the shorter and better option. 
Even on that Reece occasion. Taller. Terrell got midfielder yes. on top yes. here. you got Neoculus, Cunico and D'Angelo. That's three very, very handy midfielders. Oh, I think they're on top at the minute. Yeah, yeah. Hamilton Hall. Geez, throw it on a throw. Yeah. Yeah, just... He just held on to the ball just a touch. So he would normally tap it. Just stayed in the hands... For a split second too long, the umpire deemed a throw. Good call. He probably found himself in a position, in a position to take it out of the ruck and then yeah. thought, oh, there's a player right in front of me. So Ethan East, who was overlooked a moment ago by a teammate, has the ball this time. He's on the grandstand side of the Bensdale City Oval. Great work by, by the Maroons here. Yeah. They really clogged it up. Red Legs are trailing at the moment by 11 points. Austin, he's a two-on-one contest, and Hamilton. frustratingly for him, Hamilton takes the mark, goes inboard, risky oh. kick, went looking for, couldn't find the Oakleys, tapped forward uh, very cleverly, and now on the end of it, nicely Brown. done, he's going to run into trouble though, Brown, gets rid of trouble, left foot kick, uh, tumbles, threatens forward, 50 oh, car, oh, oh, nicely oh, done, hold the ball. holding the ball, gee whiz, Kudico's busy, gets a tap, plays on quickly, can he find a teammate, I reckon he can! Play no, he can't play on the call. And nicely done at ground level. It is Lockie a Croak that eases the pressure. Yeah, he gets it out wide to the run of Rees. He goes backwards by hand. And now Clay gave it back oh. to her, though. Rees has turned it over. Ambler was there. He's got to get a handle away, and he can't do so. He put uh, D'Angelo under a little bit of pressure. And the Red Legs stop another forward 50 entry. No wonder why coaches go bald. Koenig, you'll be pulling your hair out with some of the skill level from some of these players at the moment. Umpire quickly gets it underway. Hamilton over the top, tapped it down. McKenna was there. Squeezed a handle out to East. Now they've got some forward run. It's through Corbett and the left foot kick. He went to go the long option, and it's the not the right option. And that's a free kick every day of the week. And the advantage will be paid. Hurrigan will have the Maroon. For He's got Kinnico on. Half forward flank in a blink of an eye. Inside forward 50. Neocleus. Hard up on the boundary line. 48 metres out, tight angle. This guy is probably my best on ground at the moment. Just from his work rate point of view, he's starting himself in the middle. But I just watched him then to get to that lead. He ran across 50, about 30 or 40 metres at full tilt just to get there as well. Well, we've got a new best on ground today as well. We're going with player rankings as opposed to 3-2-1. I'll Ooh. talk to you about that later on. Neoclius from 48 metres puts it deep into the square. Big fly over the back. No one could mark it. And eventually... Tripodi will knock it over. We'll have a boundary throw in. It is a 11 point margin at the six and a half minute mark. Will that include maths? No, just ABC. Ooh. As easy <laughs> as that, Vox. Oh, yeah. ABC. You'd be right with that one. Okay. As long as it doesn't go to DEF. Ball thrown back in, 15 metres from goals. Ground level, nicely done. Ambler, can he find a teammate? He can now. Around the body, oh. good kick. Chance, Campbell. No, Chance, yes. goal three. Yes, I yes. don't reckon he's got it, has Yes, he, he has. Oh, the umpire oh. says, yes, he has. He agreed with Scud. I thought from where I was standing, it missed. There, there's your contender for the Zambrero goal of the day. What an absolute ripper. One step. The ball went as high as the goalpost as well. It did actually probably fumble in the air enough for the goal umpire to get confused and say this is a goal. But even if it was, the players knew better than us because they were already in the air once the ball went through. So Terrell going to get in reward for effort right now. And uh, there's another goal. Now out to a 17-point lead at the seven-minute mark of the second quarter. And on the... Club Eastwood Bairnsdale scoreboard. We have Trogan 5 4 34 leading Bairnsdale 2 5 17. Tell you what, good time for grilled chicken at era to Ooh. commence at Zambrero as well. Trogan and Warrigal. Chance Daltrey might just have one hand on a burrito. As the ball is up again, Van Awarden just taps it straight down to D'Angelo. Try to get through the Hamilton out of the. Uh, Mitchell tackle, couldn't do so. Quick kick there by Carstens. Inside forward 50. Underground handball there was from Bills. Austin gave it to Corbett by hand. Gets out of some traffic. Had a quick little handball from Wilson though. Coughed it oh, up. Pressure. D'Angelo gave it back to Marsh. Out kick is not a good one. Tatner will pick it off at the wing area. And they go inboard to East. On the wing. Short kick to Mitchell. Finds him. Still two kicks out. From the 50. Look at the numbers back for Terrell. Carstens will lead. Can he get up and mark? No, he can't because Hurrigan says, I'll just pick it off. And he'll go straight down the middle of the ground. Cunico's there. They've got runners everywhere. Out wide is Marsh. He can take it. No, it's Dunbar in the end. Takes the mark. Handball's off to Tripodi. He's got some pace from 51 metres, lowers the eyes and hits Lopez on the chest. That's the difference, Scud. Yeah, Good that football. That is the difference. They're prepared to use the ball well. Going inside their forward 50, the Maroons. But since their pressure up the ground as yep. well, that's really forcing bands to caught that error. When you're going short inside the middle of the ground like East did then, and we're unable to get numbers across 
forced the error. Again, linked up by Cunico again, who used the ball beautifully. Lopez has been on fire so far. He's got two. Oh, my and goodness. I tell you what, the guy doesn't wow. miss. How's this for a start in season 2024? Dylan Lopez has had three shots on goals, and he's got three goals straight. Are we able to review um, our pre-match predictions? Uh, or... I don't need to. No, no, you don't. But uh, I'll tell you what I do, too. Dogtree might have one hand on a burrito. He needs two. They're friggin' huge, <laughs> San Ferreros. But what a goal. Dills are really leading the way here, too. And uh, a great finish there. And just ball usage inside 50 is a big difference right now. And the lead is out to 23 points in Tarelgan's favour. Nine minutes into the second quarter. On the Club Eastwood Bansdale scoreboard, we have the Maroons at 6 4 40, leading Bansdale 2 5 17. All right, ball back in the centre. East flies high, gets the tap. Can he find a teammate? This has been the problem. Tarelgan is starting to gain control through that midfield. Free kick. Free kick's going to go Tarelgan's way. Yeah, gets, so, going to hold them in. Yeah, so it's Hallie Burton. Uh, grabs the ball, plays on quickly. They've been doing this well, the pace. They've been using the ball and catching uh, Bensdale more times than not unawares, but Vickery on this occasion stood tall, took the mark. Last line of defence. Both Ruckman in a little bit of strife yeah. in that marking contest. Hamilton and Ethan East. Yeah, Josh, Josh Hamilton saw as well as, as his brother. All right, they play on the red legs out of uh, defensive 50. They've been breaking down around here. This time they don't. Nicely done by Tatnall, or was it Mitchell? Yep. Over the top it goes. Uh, the one-two, uh, Blenheim was one of the two, and now they kick forward through Vickery. The race is on, 2v2. Two two. First player there, nicely done, and handballed under pressure by Brown over the top. And geez, they're moving this ball beautifully. They're playing with confidence as Daltrey gives it back to the player that set it up in Brown. Oh. His left foot kick was pinpoint perfect to find Scandrett just outside. 550, tried to thread one through, couldn't find, pick the gap. Nicely done by Hamilton. Picks it up, runs over it in the end, at grand level, taken low, I thought. Play on was the call. Hamilton holds the ball inside. And 30 metres from Tarogan's goals, the intensity is picked up. And I tell you what, Bensdale need to respond. The pressure from Tarogan was absolutely brilliant, especially in the middle of the ground then too, when they tried to link up through the hands, the red legs, but they just cut them off. But just, they were absolutely persistent. You know what time. pace does? Every time the opposition has got the ball, you can't, can't catch them. Yep. And every time you've got the ball, you're under pressure. Free kick. There's a shepherd in this ruck contest. It's going the Maroons way. They kick the goal. They kicked the goal. The advantage wasn't paid, though. Was it Trapota that kicked the goal? It could have been. Um, I think it might have been, but it's going to come back in the end to Hamilton. The Ruckman got shepherded out of the Ruck contest. He's been good in the Ruck, too, Hamilton. Once they made that move and, and Van der Walden went forward, it's really swung their way, the Maroons. So Troy Hamilton will be the one to have a shot from goal. Is 45 Troy, metres out. That's Tom, Troy. Troy's on the bench. Troy's the coach. Yep. Tom's out there. Josh is out there as well. And there's a youngster called Will who's taller than all of, all of them. <laughs> and he's got a bit of talent as well. And this is Tom Hamilton, though. Hasn't got a goal today, but his Maroons teammate have got six and they're in control by 23 points at the moment. Just to tighten the screws a bit more in the 12-minute mark of this second quarter. Hamilton sprays it out to the right. It's going to squeeze in for a minor score. And on the Mowie Racing Club, Club Eastwood scoreboard, you can save on meals, drinks and race day entry. Become a member today. It's four straight goals to Trelgan's advantage. 6-5-41 to 2-5-17. So Tatnell's on the end of the kick from fullback after that behind was scored by the visiting side. Snag Tatnell will come along grandstand side. He looks for Logan Austin, who's at the back of the pack, whilst in the front of the pack is his rough oh, beneath the knees. Turnover. Plays on quickly. Turnover. Too many today. Take Clay's on the end of this one. Four to Relgan. Play on's the call. Chips one. Oh, he went searching for. And despite the pressure from McKenna, Connor Ambler took the mark. Left half forward flank. That margin's 24 points. It's not a real worry, but it is becoming concerning as they go inside Ford 50. Grand level, nicely done again. I like this kid too. Liam Willerton, one of plenty with pace, who sees the ball over the boundary line just five metres from Tarelgan's goals. Kicking to the left of radio now. You get the sense he's been busy without yep. uh, touch yes. too many of the footy too much, but he'll, when it sort of slows down, he gets yep. the understanding of the game and the quality that it is. He'll be fine. As East in the front spot taps it down. Working hard was Neokli as quick kick goes towards the boundary line. Umpire says it was okay under pressure. Well, yeah, the, the boundary throw in. The small forwards at Tarragon today too have been fantastic as well. And Willard has been one of them too where he's been serviceable, but uh, they've been very good. Can they get another one from the stoppage? Whistle again goes and another free kick from the ruck contest My will man. go Tarragon's way. And the man of the moment, Lopez, well, he said on 
Wednesday night of the season, Lawrence, that he's got to find someone who can kick 100 goals. It might just be him alone who might kick 100 for the year. They were struggling. They were worried about what sort of scoring power they have up forward. Lopez says they need to find a couple. And at the moment, Lopez has three. Slidish angle has not missed all afternoon. The commentator's right. curse does not happen on this occasion. Woo! And Lopez has first... Half of football has got four goals to open up season 2024. And what he's just done now is really open up the game now. He's making it really hard for Bansdale to really come back from a lead like this as well. And he's led the way. He's, uh, that early goal, confidence is up. Ball's coming inside 50. It creates that confidence for the forwards, knowing that the ball's going to be won by their midfield. And you know what happens when they had all the play in the first quarter and weren't converting, Right. That they, they probably their momentum, their confidence, their enthusiasm all sort of started to drain away. And now this is a real test of this Bensdale side, who many of us think are going to be destined to be better than last year. Yep. Let's just see what they're made of. This is when you find out what your team's like. Absolutely. First game of the year, a crowd that's thinking your home team is going to show something, and all of a sudden they're five goals down midway through the second quarter. Exactly 30 points, you're right there, Poppy. 14-minute mark of the second quarter. 7-5 to 2-5, Trogan's way. Well, here it is, a big moment as well in the game. Can Bansdale get something going? Here's Tate Clay crashing in off the half-forward line. Could they just can't. can't. No. <laughs> they can't find a gap. We've got to remember, it's seven scoring shots, Bansdale to 12. So yep. Trogan have used it a lot better when it goes inside 50. Yep, absolutely. Ethan East again. This time, thumps it forward to no one really in particular. They've got some numbers, though. Quick kick there by Blenheim. High to the inside 50. Oh, well done by Tyron Reese. Beautiful mark. And Tyron Reese takes a mark directly in front. He's got some talent, this young boy. If he can stay injury-free, he's going to be a, another good inclusion. But there's a perfect example of the way the ball come inside 50. He's had to take a miraculous mark inside 50 to put himself in this position right now where Terrell on the other end yeah. are using the ball. They're lowering the eyes and bringing the ball inside. 50. The thump from Ruck was yep. more hope than anything else, yeah. as was the kick. Well, let's have a look to see. They must get this goal. The red legs to stem the tide directly in front. Shouldn't miss. He wanted to come back from right to uh, left to right, and he does just that. And after the Maroons have kicked five goals straight, Bensdale finally get one back through Tyron Reese. Yeah, look, the airwaves don't do that mark any justice. It was a fantastic mark. Yeah. The ball hung in the air for a very long time. And you're right, this Reese has got some talent as well. And to mark the ball the way he did, and he had two Maroon opponents in, uh, around him as well, it was a fantastic effort too. But hopefully it might stem a little bit of a spark here for the Red Legs because they definitely need one now. And it's a 24-point lead to Jorelgan on the... Uh, get uh, Club East would be in style scoreboard, 17-minute mark of the second quarter. All right, so Hamilton will do the ruck work for Terrelgan. He's going to be... The, oh, no, he's beaten to the ball, and nicely done it was, too, by Corbett. A kick around the body, oh. and Reese went diving for what would have been a better mark. Couldn't <laughs> take it. Terrelgan got the numbers. McMahon, usually a good user of the ball. On this occasion, no exception. Nicely done, Cade Mars. Defensive 50. Goes short. One of two options he's had. Hugh Dunbar. Left halfback flank now. Diagonal kick. Keeps possession, gains yardage. Tate Marsh. They want to change direction. Oh, risky oh, kick. Oh, oh. Very risky kick. And Logan Austin cut it off. No play on the call. And here we go. They've got numbers and they've got space. They just need a favourable bounce, which they get. A handball over the top by Skoltz. Feeds it off to Cunico. Gives ground around the corner. Neocles inside 550. Oh, oh I'll tell you, was a mark paid or not? I heard a whistle. He dropped it. If they don't pay Logan Austin in the middle, you can't pay the Connor Scandrett one. He's paid it. They've paid the mark. He's paid it. Wow. Oh, wowee. All right, play on to the call. He kicks to the open space. Look at this. I tell you, look at this. Hamilton was all alone, and he just got fingertips to it. First player there will be Bills. He kicks to space, and now there's a race. And the player to lead the race is Carstairs, oh, who good, kicks good into kick. open space around the body, hoping to find a teammate he can't. And he can't. Skolters will pick this one off. Forward handball to Hamilton was good. Now he gives another handball to Marsh. Right foot kick, dumped as he kicked. High. D'Angelo's going to sit under this one and take the mark, and he does. He pushes back. He wants a forward to come at him. Scandrick was one. Over the back, the second option's Lopez. Although coming off his opponent nicely done was Vickery. Uh, sorry, it was Tattnall in the Here end. Here we go. Squares it out wide. He's got a runner out there this time. It looks to be, is it uh, Blenheim? On the far side of the ground. It might have even been the newcomer in Harvey. Kicks to half forward. They've got some numbers. Out the back. Clay chips it to his coach in. Logan Austin on the boundary line. And Austin will go oh. across the other side of the ground. It's a neat kick. 
Can't complete the mark, though, was Max East. He gives a handball off to Cloak. Cloak will straighten up. Right foot kick. Brings it back. Oh. Not enough. Minor score. Better build up, though, by the Red Legs. Bensdale out to 3 6 24 on the Club Eastwood Bensdale scoreboard. They still trail Trelgan by 23 points and Marone 7 5 47. All right. I had to work hard for that. Yeah, they really. Did. You know, Oscar I got tired watching spot. it. Yeah. So here again now. We'll take over the kicking duties from McMahon. He'll choose to come grandstand side. I tell you what, I'm not sure. He, I think he went looking for uh, Lapraise. He couldn't find that player on the uh, on the full, but on the hop, he picked it, picked it up nicely. Chance Daltrey under pressure, got rid of it. He will get. But don't argue first yeah. and then didn't get rid of the footy. That's nah. a good decision. Yeah, so the free kick will go the way of Bensdale and it will go the way of Lockie Croak, Cloak, or Cloak. In board he goes to McKenna. So McKenna on that left leg. Suits the left leg, the kick's poor, going to fall short, and Hamilton takes the mark. How many times have they uh, turned the footy over? That's one thing they'll be, well, assessing, I suppose, at uh, half-time. What's but what that? do you do about that uh, boxer? That kick coming out, we'll get to that question in a moment, as Hamilton, uh, that's Hamilton of Bairnsdale, try to get a cloak. Just on that box, we're going to boundary throw in. What, what do you say to the guys at half They've turned the footy over a lot, Ben's though. You're going to have to be robust about your conversation. I don't think you have to yell and scream, but the thing is, you've got to make them accountable for what they're doing right now. And I think a calm head, show them what the stats look like and what it's doing to the scoreboard. Oh, nicely done by Ambler. Got it across now to Daltrey. Goes backwards by hand. Dunbar, he gets around one. Gives it to Skulters. Gives it back now to Dunbar. They've gone backwards by hand. The inboard kick's dangerous. It's gone straight down the throat of Cooper Harvey. And Harvey, left foot kick to the open space. Will find Austin. No, it doesn't. Hurrigan, though, falls over. Connor Little will come in to help his Maroon teammate. Hamble over the top. Do they want the boundary? Hurrigan says, I'll keep it in for the moment. There's McMahon now, squeezed a handball backwards. It's still alive back there. No one can get a clean one of it. Harvey now pushes inside forward 50. Handball's back. Stewart's rolled now down from the back line. He took on the tackler. They're swarming, the Maroons. Yeah, they they are, are swarming. They are like, oh, just like a flight of poo. They're just unreal. They just yeah. know what they're doing right now. Yeah, maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe bees around honey or something I like that. hate to be around I a couldn't. flight of poo. But anyway, yeah. box. Ba <laughs> balls up. Now, you know, now you know how I feel. I couldn't find the way. I don't know what goes on at your place. But I normally just push flush. <laughs> As Corbett won this free kick for holding the ball on uh, the big ruckman in Hamilton. He's too far out to score his Corbett. 21 minute mark of the second quarter. Kicks to the shallow pocket. Ethan East had to beat three. And the boundary line... We'll beat them all. Boundary throw in. Yeah, Scott, just to keep going on what you talked about then as well, it's decision making too. You know, they've, they've obviously been put under a lot of pressure. When you've got the ball, you've got the ball. So keep control of it and, and maybe just slow the game down a little bit as well. 21 minutes gone. The margin sits at 23 in favour of the Maroons. Three goals to one this quarter. Uh, defensive 50 now. They've uh, kept their back six pretty steady. The numbers around the ball have been pretty good. And on this occasion, there's a free Aye. kick, though, goes the home side's ways to McKenna. Yep. Link McKenna. He's on the wrong side for a left footer. And he'll be on the wrong side of the boundary, too. That's how sharp this angle is. So it's either a check side or an absolutely perfect punt kick for a left footer. Pockets aren't that sh uh, shallow here. So no. He's got a chance, hasn't he? He's a left footer, isn't he? Yeah, yep. he is. Which is the wrong side box. Yeah. So he needs to thread this one through. And this is the sort of goal that can lift a side off the boot, across the face for goals, and maybe out oh! play on the full. Or you pay it? He's paid it. taken. He's paid and it. I, and I tell you what, yep. it shouldn't have been allowed. Well, it shouldn't have been allowed by Terrelgan. The mark was a beauty, and it's the second one that Tyron Reese has taken this quarter. He'll run around on that left leg, and he'll goal this. Oh, wow. And it might take actually the smallest bloke on the field to uh, lift up this Bensdale side. He runs around on the left leg, around the body, yeah. ever, so, oh. ever so nice, but it hit the left upright. A behind for Bensdale. They're age closer. They need to speed things up a touch. 3-7-25, Bensdale on the Club Eastwood Bensdale scoreboard. And uh, trailing with 22 points, Trogan 7-5-47. Jacko McMahon goes straight down the middle of oh. Bensdale City Oval. He looks for Hurrigan. Don't know if there's a right option, but they get the stoppage, the Maroons, and that's probably the best result because they had a... The Redlegs had three or four around it. And we'll have a ball up. 
Just a little forward to centre for the Bansdale side. Hamilton big over the top. McKenna read it well, though. Squeezed a handball out now to Harvey on the wing. Left foot kick. Again goes to the Logan Austin direction. And he can mark right on the top of the 50. He can go from there. He's a thumping kick. He's going to swing around and lower the eyes on this occasion and get towards Clay, who couldn't mark. Skolters goes to ground. Ball gets dragged in. Umpire's going to wait no, and wait and wait no, and... No, no, no. Pay no, it, no, holding no. the ball. You just knew, didn't you? Yeah. If he doesn't call my ball and ball it up within about that sort of two-second, three-second frame and he waits and waits, you know, it's not good for the defender. And there's no chance of getting that ball out. No, the free kick will go to Tom Blenheim. 24 minutes gone in the second quarter on the Maui Racing Club quarter it is. And it's a lucky free kick too because Logan Austin's kick wasn't a great kick. No. So it's a flat-footed, not moving forward. Terrell had every chance to, to really run that out. Big moments right here as well. As the new player for the Red Legs, Tom Blenheim from Old Scotch on the left foot comes in. Distance not a problem. Accuracy is though. Geez, they're having their chances, aren't they? Yep, minor score. That's the eighth behind of the game for them. Three eight twenty six trailing to Rogan, who are seven five forty seven. So they've kicked two goals for in the first quarter, and to date one goal for in the second quarter. That's the difference in the game. Uh, uh, to bring the ball out. The kick was poor. It fell short, and Longbottom took the mark. He's 65 from home. Bensdale kicking to the right of radio. Reese wants it deep. He goes towards the pocket. Risky kick and out of play or no? The umpire says good no. mark to Austin. So this is the issue when you're having shots from goals from these sorts of angles. And yeah. that's been the case on the last few occasions. He tries to find a gap in the corridor. He won't, you wouldn't think. Rove nicely. Kiriko, off he goes. Handballs over the top. They've got some runners now and some space. They just need a little bit favourable bounce. And on the end of it, it's going to be Dunbar. Kicks to centre half what board. A kick. And I tell you what, they can hurt you on the transition. Neoclius. Neoclius just stops. He props. He steadies. And he kicks for goal. Yep. And after five minutes of Bensdale being into attack, Trog and go, take that. Wow. Nice goal. That's what you do on turnover, and you heard him on the slingshot. Cunico's one hand are coming outside the half back line here, but it was that run. That run, then I'm just going to get the dumb Dunbar. He's run and he's kicked. He kicked the space and he allowed the smalls to run onto it. And Yoculus yep. has been unreal today, especially around 4.50 because he loves a goal as well. And uh, he's finished. I believe now he is that another contender for a Zambero goal of the day. So Beansdale had the last five inside 50s for three behinds. Terrell going to go down the field and get a goal. Yeah. Take yeah. them out to a 27-point lead on the Club Eastwood Beansdale scoreboard. 8-5-53 to 3-8-26 Beansdale. 26 minutes played, second quarter. What I liked about that goal, he steadied under pressure, didn't... He, you could have been forgiven for rushing it, and he chose not to. Yeah, Kinnico wins the clearance out of the middle of the ground, drives it inside oh. forward 50 again. Low press couldn't mark it. Running out the other way is Vickery. The kick, though, he shanked it, come off the inside of the boot. Doesn't find a target. Now it's a foot race. Trying to tap it forward. There is Jesse Bills. McDonald will come in. He's close to the boundary line. Bills does well. Handles forward. Slung around. Here's Marsh. That's Cade. Brown's there as well. Ducks the shoulder. Gets under one. Close to the boundary line. Over it goes. Clever. They're very good. And they've got him fumbling now too, haven't they? So the Terrellgan's pressure. And we're deep now. 26 minutes being played in this quarter. They've still maintained that real high intensity. Tough conditions, heat warming up again. Mitchell got ran down from Daltrey. Gets the handle out to Rees. Rees, a little uh. quick barrel inside. It's four Terrellgan players on one. That one is Austin, and Austin's going to win the free kick. Definitely. The advantage was paid. Clay got it over the top, uh. and no. Yes, advantage. Harvey no. kicks the goal. No, it has to come back. Has to come back, says the umpire. Do we know why? Why? He didn't call time on. The free kick gets paid. It, it was pretty much in play. Lucky for Terrellgan, because Logan Austin will have a kick from outside 50. He's too far out to score. Now the inside 50 is all clogged up. Well, he, Logan Austin. He will kick this. He can kick this. Distance, and, distance won't be his problem. Man on the marks, 59 metres. Austin will have to kick at 55 metres. Thumps it on its way. Wow. Distance, <laughs> not a problem. Through the middle of the goals, Logan Austin, the coach, does the fist pump. And Poppy says... He'll kick this, no problem. <laughs> oh, nice finish. You can tell, you can see the passion uh, behind the, the 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 fact that he'd kicked the goal from the coach. You know, there's a, this game means a lot to him as well, and they've done a lot of work outside of uh, in pre-season to get to this point in time, and they're, they're not living up to the standard that he probably wants to be at. 
21 point margin in Tarong's favour in the shadows of the halftime siren. They are 8.553 leading Bairnsdale 4.832 all on the Club Eastwood Bairnsdale right, score. Gary Henderson, we, we one like of the a little bit players. of feedback yeah. on the go, don't we? Yeah, yep. Gary Henderson, one of the good players of uh, Gippsland, uh, just sent me through a message listening from Stockton, New South Wales. Poppy and Scud sounding good, but Nick, lift! <laughs> there it is, quick oh. kick from Red Legs. Go forward. Lockie Byrne Jones turns on a dime, has a bounce, 55 out, lowers the eyes, Austin again. Great spoil by Hurrigan. He's one of the best at that. Sculptors will come in to help. Take Clay, though. Won it off the ground. Gave it to Austin. Austin's kicks a little bit up and down. McDonald was there. Crashed his way through. He tried to get a handball out. And he's what? been pinged for throwing the ball. No, no. no. Has Lockie McDonald. We just don't want his umpires to over-officiate oh. right now. Free kick going Bairnsdale's way. Corbett will be on the end of this one. Not sure he's got the distance. He goes, OK, I'll give it to Mitchell, which we probably know he has got the distance. 29 and a half minutes gone into the second quarter for the Moe Racing Club, and the margin's at 21 points. Bansdale will just kick the last through Austin. Can Mitchell put it through now from 45? No, he can't. He's going to miss everything. Terrible. And spray it, miss it by five metres to the right. He, he went that way, and the ball went the same way. With out of bounds on the full. And Logan Austin made the mistake. Yeah, he did. He tried to take the ball on the chest and tie here again. Yeah. Um, Mr. Gadget. He's uh, He put the arms around and if he would have taken that ball out on the full and he would have felt that pressure behind yes. him as well. Like it was just a little bit of a brain fight. Short kick to McMahon out of that out of bounds on the full. 30 minutes are gone and the siren sounds. We've gone 30 minutes into the second quarter and the Maroons, well they kicked... Four goals to two in the quarter. They extended the margin from 11 points out to 21. And they go in at half time. They'll get some water in. It's hot, tough conditions in the Bensdale City Oval this afternoon. Great conditions, though, all the same. Not a breath of wind. Grounding great condition. We've got a great spectacle for the season opener of the Alinta Energy Gippsland League. And at half time, it sees Terrell at 8 5 53. Bensdale a 4 8 32. We've got the halftime wrap coming up after the break. All thanks to Gippsland Mowers will cut up and dissect that first half for you. You are listening to Gippsland Live, and it's thanks to Harvey Norman, Electrical Gippsland.
Well, this is it, the third quarter. All they do is win, and this is where it uh, comes to the four. It is the Maroons leading by 21 points. As we're about to enter the third quarter, it is Gippsland Live. Well, thanks to Harvey Norman, Electrical Gippsland. We've just gone through how this uh, half has just played out. What will the second half bring as it uh, all shapes up to be a great game of the Bansdale City Oval here in the uh, season opener? As uh, so, uh, we're about to get things underway, I've got one little eye on a bit of a race that's happening at the moment, but things aren't going as well as I expected early. But anyway, we'll uh, continue with this one as the umpire will start to get things underway for this third quarter. And it's Ethan East up against Hamilton. Hamilton with a clear tap down. Cunico was there to start off again this third quarter. Nicely done. Hamilton over the top to Halliburton. His kick, though, partially smothered. Inboard they go. It's Tripodi. Handballs to the run. Willerton puts it through. Gets his first goal wow. in the Gippsland League. And inside 30 seconds, Maroons get one. And extend the margin out to 27. Yeah, great start there by the Maroons as well. And it just started again through the midfield. And what I love, the fact is that the work rate, again, is still there. So Troy Hamilton, the coach, has got him extremely fit right now. What I do love about the fact that the way that Willington went, he started in the middle, found the ball inside 50, and had the smarts enough to finish off and get a good start to the Maroons. Absolute dream start. Nice work, Terrell. And out of that uh, midfield where we thought early... Uh, the bulk of Ethan East could cause some problems. The move hasn't really paid off, and Hamilton's been sensational throughout the course of the afternoon as we wait for the ball to come back into play. McDonald's Gippsland scoreboard has trailed with that 27-point lead. They are 9-5-59, leading Bensdale 4 8 So the ball now back in the centre. The margin, as you heard, is becoming an issue. I thought the game was still very much in the balance despite the margin at the half-time break, but you couldn't have asked for a better start for this visiting side. Ball back into play. East flies high. Hamilton provided the contest. Nicely done. Grand level. Players from both sides. Fighting hard. The umpire needs to assume control and does. Last player up, Lewis D'Angelo, with the ball. Gives it back to the umpire. Gives Hamilton another opportunity to leap at the ball. He does. He flies high, gets a tap. Can't find a teammate. McKenna at grand level. Nicely done. Here we go. A handball over the top. Uh, taken off the ball was D'Angelo. Only momentarily. Nicely done. Willerton over the top. They've got runners. They're just buzzing everywhere. And I tell you what, Cunico on the lead. His father used to be called Buzz. The buzzard. And uh, young Jordan found Laprise on the lead. And I don't know that he would have kicked five plus many times in his career, but he's got the opportunity to do so inside three minutes of this third quarter. Again, great swarm by the Tarragon side yep. again. Willerton again, calm head, went yep. to the ball at half forward, drew the player away and hit Kunico, who was smart enough to lower the eyes and hit Laprise. Well, you'd back him every wow. day of the week, wow. but look at this. Wow. Uh, a lack of concentration opens the door for Neocleus, is it? Yep. That on the lead, 40 metres out directly in front. It was a stretch for Laprise. He was capable. But this is sort of bread and butter, 25 metres out directly you know, in front. You know what I love about the fact? He's put the team first. Yes. All right? So he could have got the accolades of kicking his fifth goal for the afternoon and everything else, but he put it in the lap of a player in a better position. But I'm seeing that by Terrelgan all over the field. Yeah, yeah. Team first mentality. And it's... You know, it's it's really encouraging signs for this young Terrelgan side. Directly in front. You need to make them pay. Neocleus goes right, oh. just misses. That's where you need to twist it. They've oh. got the knife in. Well, I was just about to say, that could have been it. Yeah. Yeah, you got the knife in. They just had one opportunity has uh, gone by, Paul Carter. It's now a 28-point lead to Terrelgan. 9-6-60, leading Bairnstar, 4 8 Mcdonald's Gippsland scoreboard. Vickery comes towards East. One hand up, two hands is good. Takes the mark. Looks down the line. No one really there, although Austin and Little are the options. Hurrigan rolls back to him now, and Ethan East now decides to kick down the line. And he goes in that direction, and Hurrigan got a hand on it. You either go quickly in that situation, or you what wait was, and find the short. What was the umpire doing I don't there? understand. He had to change the man the, on the mark. No, we had got the stand rule, but what he did... Willerton took the mark when Hamilton was there so that we can get a taller player down back. So where was the rule? Yeah, well, you can do what you like. As the uh, ball comes back in, lands over at the back. Trying Look to get a handle that's over the Look shoulder. The Free kick, no. Blenheim said no. I'll take it oh. in the back. So I think he's missed the first over the shoulder. Yeah, maybe. And then just yeah. uh, said, OK, well, I'll find something here. It was in the back. So Blenheim wants him to go into the, uh, into the danger zone, but they all lead to the pocket. He'll kick to the danger zone anyway. And they're out the back, coming across was Little. Schultz then took on the tackle and lost the footy. That's holding the ball every yeah, day of the week. Yeah. 
And that is a strong tackle. Is it Tate Clay down there? I was just trying to see who it was. It was one of the youngsters. It might have been. No, it was Lockie Lock Byrne Jones. Down. He was out the back and then put a really strong tackle on. And the miss at the other end, when I was about to declare the game just about done, might come back to haunt them as Lockie Byrne Jones had the chance to swing it back their way. And they've had plenty of chances, though. Yep. And they haven't capitalised. Eight they behind so far. This one should go through the middle. Slidish angle, only 30 metres out. Byrne Jones puts it through and sneaks it home. <laughs> and that's what they needed. Five minutes into this third quarter for McDonald's Gippsland. There's magic in the air with Macca's new surprise fries. Yeah, it was a good little finish there too. He, uh, he took his time. I was a bit worried the fact that he might have been taking a bit too much time, but it was a good finish. They had to work really hard for that goal and uh, they needed to actually respond from the great start that Terrellgan have had so far in this third quarter. 22-point lead to Terrellgan, five-minute mark of the third quarter. McDonald's gets land scoreboard. Terrellgan 9660, leading Bansdale 5838. Bansdale have not kicked consecutive goals in this match. They need to do it. I've got a quick around the grounds thanks to Harvey Norman Furniture Gippsland in the netball here in the A grade. And in, they're into the last quarter. It's Terrellgan 37, lead Bansdale 26. All right, so Terrellgan leading both netball and football as we speak with a little way to go, especially in this footy game. D'Angelo skips his way oh. through a handball blindly, but he knew where he was going, and he finds his teammate in Tripodi inside Ford 50. Nice take, nice lead. Nice give, Josh Hamilton. No, 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 Poppy. That wasn't blindly. He knew. He yes. Great awareness that he had his teammate behind him as well. Yeah, Liam Willerton now finds himself in an upper, opportune position to put his second through in this quarter. He's been busy looking to find himself more comfortably within this senior side. Like what he does without the ball and now he's starting to have an impact with the ball. Liam Willerton, 45 degree angle, 25 metres out. Very steady over the ball, kicks through it and I tell you what, he's just missed to the right. So a couple of opportunities have gone begging over the last couple of minutes. Takes Terrellgan to 9-7-61 on the McDonald's Gippsland scoreboard. 23 points to the better of Ben Stowell, 5 8 38. It's a long bottom for the Red Legs. Brings it in, goes to the far side of the City Oval. Right foot kick. Sculptors will back back into this one. East will come the other direction and crunch him. No one could take the mark, though. Working hard is Mitchell at ground level. Can't quite get a handle on it. The ball goes over for a boundary throw in. Big moments thanks to the Moore Bowling Club. The new legendary sixth tap boxer. Ever changing, it's a liquid journey into the unknown. Will it be what will it be this week? The local lager, the fruity mixed spirit? Ooh. Head to the Mall Bowling Club to find out and try their sixth tap. Seven minutes into the third quarter. Margin sits at twenty three. Ball back into the field of play. Marsh kicks it around the body. Inside fifty. Josh Hamilton flies. Grand level there was Hamilton for the Red Legs. Gave a handball backwards to long bottom. Just dumped it down the wing. And the mark will be taken by the Maroons. Good mark too it was. Marsh. Stood his ground. Tate Marsh. So Tate Marsh, out of side wing, plays on. Looks for some room in the corridor. He's got a couple of options. Can't find the uh, teammate, but coming in was Neocles, taken off the ball. Now Brisbane have got a wave. In fact, Bensdale have got a wave <laughs> of players. Freudian slip. I wouldn't mind being there as Logan Austin now. Uh, takes the ball, swings, kicks off the boot. Looks beautiful. Can he find Carstairs, is it? Got numbers, yep. Inboard. Inboard. He's got a couple of numbers running towards him. Oh, the kick's not as good as it could have been. And now they're in a spot of bother. He gets it back. A kick around the body. Just to the top of the square. Trogan should bring this ball down. They do. Can they keep it in play? Burn Jones rushed it. Couldn't quite keep it in the field of play. Pop. Too, too high, uh, Scud. He got uh, tackled and dumped. The umpire's called too high. And, okay. a, and a 50. Wow. So this is going to go straight through. Paul Carter said they haven't kicked two goals in a row. The red legs, well, they will now. And it will be from the same player. And look, I think the lip might have come from the captain of the Maroons as well. Lockie Byrne Jones goes bang. Ooh. He's got the two in a row, and he's got just what the red legs needed after the opening goal to Liam Willerton for the Maroons. Eight minutes have passed in the third quarter, and we get the margin now back to 17 points. That's on the McDonald's Gitsland scoreboard. Uh, Bansdale now go to 6-8-44, trailing Terrellgan 9-7-61. And what could have been more disappointing for Bansdale is they had to work hard again for the goal. We had players that were in position already, but Carstein's, is that his name? Did yep. I say it right? Carstein's. Carstein's um, picked the wrong option and the kick wasn't great either. Uh, but they were lucky enough to work hard enough inside 50 uh, to get rewarded with the goal in the end. So the ball back in the centre of 
Bensdale City Oval. Hamilton, oh. geez, he went up awkwardly, got hand to ball, but hit the deck very hard, and he's still down on his haunches. As Bensdale grabbed the ball and come grandstand side, the leg was nice. That ground is really door. hard. There. Has the ball, short option. Oof. So they're spending time. Blenheim has the ball. Hamilton's still on all fours. I think winded, most likely. As Blenheim goes inside Ford 50. East, East is the target. Oh, got ball knocked out of hands. And now at grand level, they've got the numbers. A little kick for... Oh, goal. No, yes! It's going to be, yes! without question, oh, the Zambrero goal of the year. Boxer, go uh, give it to him now. Yeah, give me the voucher. Let's go. That's it. That Tyron nice. Reese. Absolutely oh. brilliant. And, you know, the only way we could describe it to the listeners is it was a little bit like Peter Dacos yes. in the 1990 prelim final we are inside out he, on the wrong side he turned left to go back <laughs> to the right it was in uh, it was an incredible goal and we see hamilton coming off now too might have had the wind taken out of him as well that uh, center of the ground is so hard but take nothing away from that goal that was absolutely brilliant absolutely brilliant the voucher's done i'm giving it to him it's that's, done. that's three inside 50 for bansdale this quarter for three goals and that certainly uh, is something they've been missing this match it's now an 11 point margin wow. in terrelgan's favor mcdonald's Gift fan scoreboard. The Maroons 9 7 61. Ben's now 7 8 50. Van Awarder just takes it out of the ruck, dumps it inside forward 50. Josh Hamilton oh. gives it off to the run. Williton has a look at the goals. Williton puts it through. Yes, sir. Ray. And a swift reply from the Maroons. We've got a game of footy on our hands. We absolutely have, too. And I think what Williton's done now, and we spoke about it earlier, he's found his feet in the Gippsland League right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can see he's just shown some composure. He's really deadly around goals, and he's got a high work rate. So everything that you want in your small forwards, he's delivering right now in this third quarter. Margin now 17 points in Terrelgan's favour. We're 11 minutes into the third quarter. And on the McDonald's Gippsland scoreboard, Terrelgan 10-7-67, leading Bansdale 7 8 50. So Van Warden got that ball up in the centre of the ground. He surprised himself with the ball and quickly kicked inside Ford 50 with hope, but it was lucky as Eath this time thumps it forward towards half forward flank. The free kick's going to go which way? Yeah, it's quarter block. Uh, quarter block, has he? Okay, so Ethan East, who gained 40 metres with the thump, will now get an opportunity to be a bit more deliberate oh. as he goes forward. He plays on, goes towards the right half forward flank. 50-50 contest again. Nicely done, grand level. It's Tarong with the numbers. Connor Little, first player there. Nicely uh, picked up by Cooper Brown, who goes inboard. And now they've got some runners and they've got some room to move. Chance Daltrey takes the ball. Usually a good user. He should go right half forward. He's got a lead on or out the back. Just didn't find his target. And picking up the ball was Tatnell. He goes forward. Lachlan and Burn jones who's been busy in this quarter. He's kicked two now. Sends his home side inside forward 50. But Harrigan, as he does ever so regularly, picks it off and plays on and finds Harvey in the Oakley. On the wing, he's got Brown on, but just missed him. Now Ethan East has to put in the chase. Brown taps it forward. Good chase by East in the end. And he's oh. won a free kick, though, Cooper Brown. Bit lucky, I thought. But. Brown got one over the shoulder, outside 50. He's a left footer. And someone's down. Scandrick's down inside forward 50. He, now he pops up. And Brown kicks it to the hot spot. The Flyers. No one can mark. Ground level there was Scandrick. Played for the free kick. The umpire said play on. Ambler puts Burn Jones into the ground. Then goes, gets the football. Flicks out to Dunbar, who puts ball to boot. And puts it just inside the field of play. We've got a boundary throw in, though. 13 minutes gone. It's a 17-point margin to the Maroons. It's three goals to two in favour of Bansdale in this third quarter for McDonald's. What's been really impressive with Terrelgan's forwards, they've made a contest every time. The ball comes inside. They're prepared to make a contest. Their small forwards are the ones that are really hurting Bansdale at the moment. So ball thrown back in, just metres from Terrelgan's goals. The praise around the body, top of the square, quick kick from the pack. Did it come from Terrelgan? I'm guessing it yep. did. It falls in the arms anyway of Randall Stewart for Bensdale. Right back pocket. Needs to switch this. Yeah, the home side are kicking to the left of Radio. Nope. And he's going to have to go short because the numbers Terrelgan have behind the ball make it impossible for a long target. Link McKenna's the option the short and switch he chooses is, that player. Sorry, Pop, the switch is still on. They've got, had two extra numbers if the switch occurred, but they didn't. So McKenna along the line, out of side. Red legs with numbers, but the pressure from Tarogan's pretty bloody good. Spills out nicely. A lucky uh, yep. cloak got taken high. 
Now the they get the gear and he goes, goes inside. It's still on. Yeah, Here they that go. That switch that was on has now been taken as Tate Clay goes inside Ford 50. Oh, good oh, spoil oh. by Tarogan. Oh, and now it's a 50 50 at grand level. Austin ducked the head and was taken, ball and all. And a good call from the umpire, 45 metres from Ben's Dale's the goal. The supporters have got every right to be upset with that decision. You come front on, it's a free kick all day, yeah, every day. Yep. And uh, unfortunately, oh, we won the raffle, did we? No, we just won. Uh, oh. the, the ladies here at the Vansdale Red Legs have looked after us with a little bit of afternoon tea. D'Angelo out of that stoppage, handballed it. Back to Ambler, his kick goes high. Numbers favour the Red Legs. Good work by Lopez to cause the contest, though. And the stoppage in the end. And 14 and a half minutes gone. Paul Carter, you're good. Yes, he is. He uh, can't uh, can't talk at the moment. He's just hoed down a lamington. <laughs> you can always count on your mates to look after you, Paul. <laughs> as Chance Daltrey tried to crash through, we'll have a secondary stoppage. What I've liked about Tarogan, quite apart from the things we've spoken about, versatility and pace, yep. is the ability to respond as a side when they're under pressure. And Bensdale, make no question, they've been putting them under pressure. At this stage, Tarogan have managed to stand tall. Willerton. Yeah. Gives ground to Daltrey. Daltrey does the same. Looks for a teammate in the Oakleys. Now they're under pressure again. But again they respond. What well, Nicely done. Here again. Kick, taps the ball in forward. McKenna, bottom of the pack. Drag that Umpire in. takes Ooh. control. And, and I'll tell you what. The upside for Terralgan here. They've got Max Jacobson still to come back in. Dan McKenna. Maybe Matt North. Maybe. Um, who was the other one we were talking about before as well? Oh, we can't talk about that. No, All right. Not sure who so, you're talking about. I reckon Tristan Wack is the player we might be speaking about without speaking about. More about that in the days ahead. As uh, the ball is grandstand side, it's going to go for Elgin's way. And look at the space they've got. If they move it quickly, LaPraise looks for the lead. He's got the lead. The kick looks good too. Can he find oh, the target? He, he did and just dropped what he should have taken probably was Connor Scandrett. And now Bensdale under pressure but responding through Corbett. Inboard to McKenna. He's been good. Well, he had some runners there yeah. and held onto the ball and maybe he should have played on quickly. Oh, Two Mitchell. Bensdale players run into each other, but they both had eyes for the ball, one of which was Will Mitchell. Yeah, Harvey now gets it. He should have got it a couple of minutes ago. He gives the hand back to McKenna. Goes inside. We've got a hamstring. Logan Austin's done a hammy, by the way, boys. Keep an eye on that. Inside 50. Burn Jones. Squeeze the handle to East. Out to the boundary line. And Tyron oh. Reese again. You can have two bloody burritos. Wow. Tyson and Reese has kicked two of the best goals you'll see from nearly the same pocket as they close the margin back to 11. The big story, though, Boxer, is Logan Austin's done a hammy. Yeah, I did see the back end of that goal. It was a brilliant goal, too, but there's some uh, dejected uh, people walking here, especially the coach of the Bansdale side. I don't know if he's done a hammy or not. Has he or not? Do you think he guarantee. has? He grabbed it? Yep, yep. guarantee. Yep, looks like he's uh, told the trainers exactly what's happened as well. That's a massive loss for the Red Legs, if that's the case. It's a really big dent to their forward line. So hopefully it's not too bad for him at the minute. But at this stage, it looks like they're going to be without him for the rest of the afternoon. McDonald's gets fans scoreboard. Bansdale reduced the margin back to 11 points at 17-minute mark of the third quarter. They are 8-8, trailing Trogan 10-7. All right, Paul back in the centre of Bansdale's home ground. Again, Hamilton comes down awkwardly. Again, he lands on that hip. And again, he's in a spot of bother. As the red legs go forward, they need to get another one really to apply the screws or tighten the screws on this Tarogan side. Nicely done, McMahon. Over the ball, holds it in, and the umpire will take control. Left half forward flank, Bensdale to the left of radio and trailing, as you know, by 11 points. If, if I put my uh, coach's hat on just for a moment, Ethan East forward while uh, Logan Austin is off. And you can just, you know, you pinny hit with uh, Vickery or somebody else into the ruck. I just need a big tall forward. Because they win the ball forward, I just need a big target to kick to now. And they appear to have a few tall options, uh, as you've pointed out, Boxer. I still can't believe Tyron Reese. He's, oh, he's just, unreal. He's kicked yeah. two goals in this quarter to fire his team up. Too high. He's clearly won the Zambrero goal today. I just wrote on it, take your pick. Two of the best goals you'll see. So they play on nicely. It was uh, Corbett who fed it off, and now in trouble, Bensdale. Uh, play on was the call. The umpire gave him a little bit of time, and now McKenna, handball over the top. But they're going to be under pressure. Oh, was he taken high? The umpire says no. Bensdale still 40 metres from their goals on a 45-degree angle. We've played 18 and three-quarter minutes of this third quarter, and Bensdale edging closer as each minute passes, but they just can't get close enough to take the lead oh, at this stage. Go. McKenna with He's the ball. Waiting, the waiting, waiting. wants to pay he it, just loves it, and he, he does it. He just loves it. So a free kick will go to Elgin's way. It's got to be the most theatrical free kick in footy at the moment, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Holding the ball. <laughs> McMahon 
the recipient of a play on, and now they go towards Laprise, who had the sit, tried to take a man, and uh, disguise it as a spoil, as Connor Ambler came in, took ball and player, opposition player, over the boundary line. Uh, I've got a final score on the A-grade netball, thanks to Harvey Norman Furniture, Gippsland, and it was Terrelgan, 43, to fit a Bansdale, 34. All right, we'll get our Gippsland Live Player of the Day, the Gippsland Azusa Ute Player of the Day as well in a moment. As this tap down there, so Max East will take the ruck duties as well now, as Big Ethan sends in the goal square at the moment. Numbers around this contest, Neoclis is there with D'Angelo, Ambler as well, Corbett and Rees for the red legs. Hamilton got a hand on it, out towards the boundary line. McKenna was there, Ambler did well though. Won it and then the kick was smothered. The Bansdale side on the rebound. Hamble over the top to Door. Gets around a tackler and then a little wobbly kick. Might be turned over, it is. And they'll play on quickly. Skolters took the grab. Oh. Gets to Tripodi. No, it doesn't. The bounce eludes him. Tate Clay, Hamble's back now to Tattnall. Right foot kick out the front there of Jesse Bills. But quickly there is Marsh. We know he's got wheels. Goes to ground as Marsh. Stands up, runs away. And now gets a handball forward to Huey Dunbar. He's got a little bit of time. He'll handle over the top to Skolters who ran on. He gets another handball out to Dunbar. Have they coughed it up? No, they got some numbers quickly wrapped up. Tripodi was holding the ball. And the free kick will go to the red legs. And it's Kieran Vickery on the far side of the ground. Yeah, so as good as Tarogan have been, Bensdale have lifted their work rate as well. And especially when the opposition have the ball, there hasn't been the room that Tarogan have sort of been blessed with for the first 60 minutes of this game. Deep into the third quarter, Bensdale are starting to look as though they want this game. To Ford 50 they are at the moment. Fighting hard for the ball was Cloak. Lockie Cloak. 30 metres now from goals. Still the pressure's on. Free, kick Free kick's going to go Terrelgan's way. Dropping the ball. Defensive 50. Terrelgan will ease the pressure. And, and a 50 metre. And a 50 metre. That's dangerous. 11 points the margin favouring the visitors. As the White Guernsey start to run forward very, very quickly, Joel Skoltz with the ball finds one of those that was running quickly, and that's Cunico. Should have been tackled, but he was too strong. Burst the tackle, kicked to within 30 metres, but a good strong mark was taken by Randall Stewart. Now they use the width of the ground. The Reeves. switch is on. Harvey's got it now. Over to Rees by foot. He's got a paddock in front of him. He's going to check it and come back in board to McKenna, and he'll run on. So does Hamilton. That's the Bansdale Hamilton. And the first gamer lopes along the wing. Kick was partially smothered. Hurrigan was there. He'll be called to play on. He gave a handle to McMahon. Back to Hurrigan. Took on one tackler. Oh. Got through it with ease. And then the kick straight down Stewart's throat. Although two oh. Bansdale players collide. Chance Daltrey says give it to Ambler. Who gives it to Williton. They've got a number on inside forward 50. If they can get it in there. The Cunico Prince. says I'll get it to you Dylan. And he takes the mark. And 50 surely. And yeah, 50 yes, surely. Indeed. So here goes goal number five. Yep. He's kicked five goals straight this afternoon, Dylan Lopez. The 50-metre penalty will take the man on the mark to the goal line. Transition footy. Two Bansdale players collide on centre wing. And away go the Maroons. And Dylan Lopez marked it down already from the top of the square. Goes bang. Kick five. And the margin's back out to 17 points. It's a great afternoon when you can kick five. But when the ball comes in the way it does like that too. And his leading's been fantastic as well. Ball use again. We've been talked about it, talking about it, and talking about it. But Terrell going to just use the ball a lot better because mm -hmm. you're talking about freaky goals coming from Bansdale. They have to be freaky goals. They're more structured going through the Maroons as well. So a nice little bag full there for Dylan. 17-point margin in Terrellgan's favour. We've played 23 minutes into the third quarter. The McDonald's Gibbs fans scoreboard as Terrellgan at 11 7 at 73, leading Bansdale 8-8-56. Oh. Stacey O'Brien was uh, the winner in the netball A grade today for Izuzu player of the day. So one well under Stacey. Beautiful. Thank you very much. Just a little bit of more feedback as well. Uh, this time from Anthony Pavey. Well done, Poppy, Scud and Paul. Good work. And uh, Boxer, you need a lift. So uh, <laughs> thanks very much to Anthony Pavey, who's uh, working this afternoon. Give us a little bit of feedback on the go. It is yeah. round one, of course. I'll, I'll give yeah. you some feedback. It appears to be a common theme, doesn't it? Yeah, As Terrellgan go forward again. So they've responded at this stage. And now if they can they really make Bensdale hurt, they're going to get their chance in the Oakley's Quick kick out of the pack! just goes right and a minus score for the visiting side but the margin extends to three goals even Paul Carter. Exactly right Poppy 11-8-74 Terrelgan to Benza 8 8 56 on the McDonald's Gippsland scoreboard. So back in the field of play gets it towards Blenheim he kicks out wide it looks to be Clay 
On the outer side, they've got some good youngsters, the Bansdale side. Likewise with <laughs> Trelgan. The switching kick <laughs> found Lando. He's got Stewart on if he's got enough penetration in the kick, and it does. Lands on Stewart's chest. He's got a runner on the outside. It's Blenheim. The draw handball was good. And Blenheim's left foot kick down the line, looking for Carstairs. Little got underneath the footy. Reese will pick it up. We'll give a handball back to Dor. He's going to go backwards to Matthew Hamilton. And he's just going to put it in towards the tall targets. It looks like they've swung the move in. Longbottom's gone forward. Handball out. Jesse Bills gives it to Lockie Burn jones And Burn jones will run into an open goal. And... Put it. Oh, no, wait, he's missed it. He's what got happened? tackled on the goal line. And now Harvey's under pressure and he's got ping folding the ball. Oh, can you believe that? How did the Maroons wow. stop that? That is desperation at its best. As Lockie Burn jones was running into an open goal, the tackle caused an errant kick, went straight up and down. And eventually they get holding the ball. Well, that was unbelievable. And there's the reward for that not giving up ever as Kuniko... Draws the player, goes over the top. The one-two came from his teammate in Connor Little. Gives it back. They're under pressure. They've oh. normally responded, but on this occasion, the pressure too much. Good work. Home side, Ben Stahl, free kick. And now we'll make amends for an opportunity that went missing just a few moments ago. Uh, you know what makes it more incredible, that tackle? It was Tom Hamilton. So, you know, you're talking about a big player. Yeah. Uh, to, to lay a tackle like that, that desperation, just going to give your, your teammates a massive lift. So Cooper Harvey for this home side. Can draw it back to two goals in time on of this third quarter. Big moment for the Moore Bowling Club right yeah, now. Yeah, exactly right. If they can go in within striking distance, they go in with hope and enthusiasm that Logan Austin can draw on. But it's up to Cooper Harvey right now. Left leg. He's on the right side for a left footer. He's kicked wow. for goal. Was an absolute cracker. The game's hot again. I tell you what, they just keep responding at the moment, Bansdale. And uh, hopefully those young, tired legs don't uh, run out on Terralgon at the minute right now. But uh, they're really forcing the area inside 50. Some really good signs here from Bansdale too once they get the ball inside 50. Uh, all led there too by Lachlan Byrne-Jones. So uh, they need another one now to really put the game on its head. Kicked five goals straight this quarter after 4-8 uh, up till half time. Huh. Certainly uh, it has been a big change. It's uh, just 12 points to difference on the McDonald's Gippsland scoreboard. 11-8-74 Terrelgan, 9-8-62 Van Star. They need the next one I sent. Yep. They've, they've been thereabouts. They haven't been able to get it back into uh, single figures. And I think if they get one more, Bansdale, that will give them a lot of enthusiasm running into the last. But can the Maroons respond? They have most of the afternoon. Cloak with fights hard at ground level. Try to get it out. McKenna tried to squeeze it. Well done by Tripodi. Twisting and turning. East will come in to help win it. Give it back to Mitchell. He puts his teammate under a little bit of pressure. Has to go and get it again, does Mitchell. East. Although the free kick, now the advantage will be paid as Lockie Cloak has it. He looks up. He goes short. And he can find Reese Carstairs. He'll wheel around and go. It's an open forward line. The longer option is long bottom. It sits on his head. Hurrigan's bred for this. Takes the mark and will quickly handle out to Joel Scolders, who's got the outer side. He takes a bounce. He takes another. He handles outside his defensive 50. Puts Marsh under some pressure. who just left it behind for a moment. Comes back, though. Kicks it to Willerton. He dives and can't complete the mark. Now they're under pressure. McDonald dragged it in. Umpire said no prior opportunity. We'll have a ball up directly in front. 49 metres out from Bensdale's goal. 27 minutes gone. 12 points is the margin. And as players start to get tired, there starts to be some gaps opening up for both sides oh. to take the opportunity. Link McKenna oh. tackled. Nicely done. Ball held in. All oh, high in the end. will go the way of the Maroons. And it's the on. umpire comes in quickly because Hamilton didn't like the attention he was given. And now that has to be 50, surely. I sense that. And, and again. Well, Reese is getting stuck into Scolders now. It's on, and now they call play on. Yes. You can t call the footy pop. I'll watch the uh, dust up. All right, so Chance Daltrey has the ball, and the Bensdale player that started the fight is all of a sudden on the bottom of the pack and wondering whether he should have. They play on. Nicely done. Good. Played on and paid the price. Nice work, Bensdale. Good tackle. That Opens the door. Here. Fight's finished. Orlando. Fight needed to be finished too yep. because Bensdale can win this game, and they need to get hold of the ball. At this oh. stage, they've got hold of the ball. And a good, courageous mark taken, despite the pressure that's been applied by Chance Daltrey. Bensdale have the opportunity to get within one straight kick. And if ever you want a player to have the ball, this is the player that you want to have it. He's kicked three goals today. Two of them would be in the goal of the year. And this time he goes short. And that was all too easy. Bensdale, through Jamie Dore, can make this a one-goal game 
right on three-quarter time. Wow. We may even hear the siren before this ball's kicked. That's how close we are. 29-plus minutes gone. Two goals the difference. Tarogan 11-8. Bensdale 9-8. Door with the ball. 25 metres out. 45-degree angle. Takes his time. A crowd waits. The oh, kick is poor. No. Goes across the face of goals and possibly out in the full. Nope. No, Hutch. touched over the line. So there's still hope for Bensdale to snatch a last-minute goal. Probably a last-second goal. We're tight for time. Both sides know it. Ruckman will be Longbottom and Hamilton. Hamilton kept his feet, took it out of the ruck, handled over to D'Angelo, ducked the shoulder, and the umpire said it was over the shoulder, in fact. And Louis D'Angelo has the free kick. He wants to go to the far side of the ground towards the boundary line. He knows it's 29 and a half minutes, and he kicks it out of the far, far side. Lopez presented. The siren sounds. And three-quarter time is upon us. An exciting third quarter for McDonald's Gippsland. Peel any medium or large fries for a chance to find out the prize before April 9. It's Macca's new surprise fries, and we have a game on our hand. The margin is only 12 points. It's two straight kicks at three-quarter time. Trelgan lead it, 11-8-74. Leading Bensdale, 9-8-62. It's Gippsland live on Easter Saturday, right across Gippsland and the Valley on TRFM. And it's all thanks to Harvey Norman, Electrical Gippsland.
Ah, oh, yes, it is a final countdown, and we have a good one on our hands as well. It is a 11-point margin. No, what are we up to? 12-point 12. 12 margin, sorry. 9862 to 11874. Paul Carter, key stats. All thanks to Gippsland Izuzu. You. 10 inside 50s apiece of that quarter for the teams. Uh, ben started leading at 37-32. Trailing won the clearances, 9-6. There was four each uh, in the centre clearances of that quarter. Free kicks, uh, Ben have got the better at the moment, 25-19. Marks pretty similar. Contested marks at 10 apiece. Marks inside 50, 12, 12 to 14 to Elgin's way. Three goals straight, and, and as we said, uh, Bansar kicked five goals straight that quarter after kicking four goals eight in the first half, and that was probably the main difference in the quarter, making better use of their opportunities. A couple of those uh, key players that uh, we're following this afternoon, head-to-head. -head. Uh, Lockie Byrne-Jones is 14 touches up against Connor Ambler, also on 14. Louis D'Angelo is on 16. Uh, Will Mitchell, 17. He had six that quarter. Boxer, what did you make of that? And uh, a quick around the grounds check as well for us. Uh, just firstly, though, I thought it was a small forwards quarter that run as well. You know, you got Rees, Willington, and then you got uh, young Lachlan Byrne Jones. They really uh, entertain us that quarter. They'll bring it inside their forward 50s respectively as well. And then you got Dil Lopez who bobs up and kicks his fifth for the quarter as well. So I just find that there's going to be a bit of a pendulum swim now to swing uh, towards Bansdale as well. And, okay. Uh, I just feel that uh, they had a little What's bit of that? momentum as that? well. What? I just felt that there's a little bit of... That momentum, momentum change you spoke about, about yeah. Bit. Uh, look, I've definitely seen the game open up. If you're prepared to run hard now, you'll get easy possessions by working hard. There's plenty of space out there. First game of the year, legs are tied. And, Scud, this is when, if you can find something somewhere, you will get possessions. Absolutely. And the first quarter and this first couple of moments, sorry, in this last quarter is all important. And Terrell can go forward through Ambler. Centre half for it, it goes. And good one-two bite. Nicely done by the new, start, new player in Lando. As he has the footy in his hands at half back. He wants someone to go to the wing. Carstairs will present with Dorr. It's two on one. Dorr's in the front spot. Marsh will spoil but couldn't affect it. And Jamie Dorr takes the mark. Comes inboard. Willerton goes hard. Keeps his feet. Tatner was there as well with a swinging arm. Play on to the umpire. Vickery across now to Blenheim. Back to Blenheim. He gets it. From Mitchell and Blenheim's left foot chiseling kick. Going to hit the deck. Reese was there. Got boot to board. No, he didn't. Holding the footy, said the umpire. Cunico will get the advantage. Quickly move it towards Neoclius and Stewart. Neoclius flew from the back. Couldn't complete the mark. Shoves Stewart out the way. Now Stewart puts a tackle on him oh, with a teammate coming in. And we're going to ball up top of the 50. Great work there by Neoclius as well, too. He kept his feet. Didn't go to ground. His opponent did and managed to keep the ball inside his 50. First scorer, I think, first goal scorer, I think, wins the game. Um, yep. And they're all going to get first opportunity as they go inside Ford 50 and take the mark. I mean, three goals is a long way to come back from. If Lucas Tripodi can goal from here, whereas if Bensdale score, there's only one kick the difference and we've got a, a real hot game. So, he, as they've done in... The third quarter, Terrell going to hoping to get an early goal. He'd want to have a good leg. I mean, he, he was really held up. He's really given himself, a, he's backed himself in here. Yep. So Tripodi will kick from 49 metres off the boot. Not sure it's going to make the difference. LaPraise flies high through for a point. But every point's important now as we go from two goals to two goals, one Paul Carter. That's right, Poppy. 11 goals, 9.75 Terrellgan on the Harvey Norman computer scoreboard. 13-point lead over Bansdale, 9.862. Bansdale holding on to this one, and we're going to get a quick around the grounds check for you, although the turnover happens. And Mitchell turned it over. D'Angelo puts it back into open space at the toes of Josh Hamilton. Hamble's back now to uh, Neoclius. He gives it to Tripodi, to Cunico. The handle out wide to Huey Dunbar from 49 metres. What a leg. Oh, oh Chance Daltrey dropped the mark that he should have taken in the end. And now, numbers around this will call the stoppage. Boxer around the ground, thanks to Harvey Norman Furniture, Gippsland. In the AFL, they're on, they're on the way there. It's the Bombers. They take on the Saints, and the Saints have got off to a quick start. 1-1-7 one, one, to no score. A-grade netball quickly. 43-34 uh -huh. to 34 to Elgin's way. So ball in uh, defensive 50 for Bensdale. The pressure's still applied to Rolgan. Top of the square. Bensdale have got the numbers, but they're under pressure. Can they hold the ball? They can. Can they get it out? They do. It hasn't been easy, but Lockie Cloak made something out of nothing, and he has found the boundary line. The field umpire says ball it in. Left half forward flank. Grandstand side. Trolgan kicking to the left of your radio and leading by 13 points. Three minutes gone, final quarter. First game of the year. Important for both sides. One young and upcoming, the other has been built 
to perform something special in 2024, and I speak of Bensdale, but they're going to need something special now as Luis D'Angelo kicks on side 450. Ooh. Chance Daltrey got hands on. The umpire says Block. he was interfered with, and Chance Daltrey, who can kick a goal, he's got an option short. I reckon that could be the little fella, number yep. 20, Williton, who's kicked two, both in the third quarter, and he's got the chance to make it very hard for Bensdale to come back if he can goal from 30 metres out on the slightest of angles. That was a good old-fashioned tunnel, wasn't it? I wouldn't have thought it was a block. It was just the way the player had come in. And there's Williton again. I reckon he could have got a handball over the top to Dill Lopez then too. It was on his own. But he's really backed himself out here. He's 30 metres out directly in front. So, Williton, he's been busy with the ball. He's been busy without the ball. And he's been busy in front of goal. But on this occasion, he's sprayed it to the right. We saw this in the sec uh, third quarter, third didn't quarter. we? When yep. they had their chances. Trailing 11, 10, 76, leading by 14 points on the Harvey Norman computer scoreboard over Ben Sale, 9, 8, 62. Kieran Vickery, straight down Tyron Reese's throat, he's been good and now a cramping. As halfback flank gives a handball back to Kieran Vickery, who ran on. He's on the wing, chips it over the top, he's going to miss the target. Skolters is there, he's got support with Ambler. Now Hurrigan comes to help, a sweeping handball over the top to Ambler. A chain of handballs, they get on the end of this is Marsh. Kicks it down the line. East can't complete the mark. Here is again Willardon. Left foot kick on this occasion. High kick. There's cramping players everywhere on the ground and off the ground. And there's a free kick. No, the advantage. Free kick's going to go the way of Bensdale. No, they've no. played the advantage after everyone had stopped for at least five seconds. And McKenna finds himself on the right halfback flank. Well, Tattnall's on the sideline with a cramp. We've got Tyrone Reese is still down with a cramp. Kieran Vickery had one as well. And that's just three Bansdale players. Meanwhile, Ethan East takes the mark on the wing. Well, we said this is going to play a part deep into the quarter, didn't we? And it is certainly now. The young Trelgan players at this day, stage are standing tall. They go along the line. They can't keep it in play. Oh, out of bounds on the full. And the free kick will go Trelgan's way. Who's going to take the ball? Is it going to be young Hamilton or it is? So Lachlan Byrne-Jones reluctantly gives the ball back to Hamilton. Reese is still down at half-back flank too, by the way. Yeah, he's in all sorts of bother. Just a cramp. Yep. But we all know what cramps are like, and <laughs> usually you can get out of them with a stretch. Boxer gets one in the middle of the night these days. He does too. <laughs> You're not lying. Yeah, and Marty can hear him from the other room. <laughs> Obviously, they sleep in separate rooms. <laughs> we do. Uh, yes. oh, oh, taken high. Connor Little Terrell free kick. Connor Little. They were in a bit of bother there, Tarogan. Probably just overused the ball a tad. And now Connor Little, uh, Connor Little is still on the ground. He will get the free kick. It's taken a little bit of time to get up. Yeah, it gives him the chance to, or his side, the chance to compose. As Tyron Reese eventually now just gets to the boundary line and is still cramping as he's running. <laughs> there it goes again. <laughs> he cannot take one step without a cramp as that kick now goes down to half-back flank. Lots of numbers around this. The umpire will have no other option but to ball it up. Six and a half minutes into the final quarter. It's 14 points at the margin. It's just on a knife's edge at the, edge at the moment. Bansdale a trailing. Terrell lead it. East thumps it forward. Gets through the hands there of Tate Marsh. He handles backwards to his brother Cade. Now to Huey Dunbar. Right foot kick to the wing. Looks for Tripodi and oh, one good, hand. Mark. Classic. Now Tom Hamilton's down with a cramp. It's Terrell's turn. Tom's not moving. He's stretching as well. Gets called to play on. Does Tripodi to half forward they go. Big pack will form. It gets to the back. The Oakleys will run onto it. Getting tackled. Got boot a boot. Puts a throw. Nice. Just what they needed. There's about five players stretching at the same time as well now. And that's how you break it open. Harvey Neocleus gets another. He's got two this afternoon. It could be enough. I'll have to shorten the quarter because we're going to run out of players very soon. <laughs> um, but again, another flick on turnover. But the, the first six or seven minutes, it's all about turnovers from both sides. Um, Geraldine's luck's a fortune. And that's why we watch. It's like someone's been, sh they've been people have been <laughs> shot left, right and centre here because there's players down everywhere. But a great, great goal there by Geraldine on the rebound. And just what they needed to. Neoculus has been fantastic all afternoon. Yeah. Tom Hamilton's still down. He's still down. <laughs> He's not taking ruck duties. Yeah, sniper cramp has <laughs> He's shot down a few plays at the moment. Tyron Reese and Hamilton just should uh, sit in the far pocket. Yeah, <laughs> together. <just> stretch. <laughs> stretch each other. Ball back in the centre of Bensdale City Oval. Uh, Jacob Van der Warden contesting the ruck while he's first choice ruckman. <laughs> he's still trying to get rid of a cramp. And they go forward now. Nicely done. Ambler on the leak. And he find a winner. He
Avery can't. Chance Daltrey is one of two players for Terrellgan trying to chase it down. Bensdale standing tall. Good pressure from behind from Terrellgan. Keeps the ball in the area and over the boundary line. Left half forward flank. As Terrellgan start to use that interchange bench. Josh Hamilton to come back on. Cooper Brown to come off. Terrellgan in front by 20 points. It's a big ask now, oh. but we've seen it before. Now big Tom Hamilton comes off as well. And young Williton comes on. A tall for a small. Holding the footy. Holding the footy. He's going to go to uh, Bensdale's way. And it'll be Will Mitchell. They need to take a risk. They need to take a risk to get themselves back in the game. They do. As Mitchell drives it towards half forward. Longbottom's got a couple. Hurrigan unopposed. You can see that coming, didn't you? Scott, this is how bad it is. Bansdale can't even do a, a rotation at the moment. Link McKenna wants to come off and can't. Yep, they're all cramping. Kick down the line from uh, Hurrigan. Hamilton couldn't quite take the mark. That's Josh. Quick question. Does pickle juice come in a slab? <laughs> oh, it does. I know the answer to that because uh, my young bloke struggles with cramp. And uh, he's got none left after about three quarters. Pickle juice. Mm -hmm. He oh. just drink it. Just drink it, mate. Boundary throw in. Nine minutes gone into the final quarter. Terrelgan's got it out to 20 points. Van Awarden taps it forward. Daltrey will try and get to this one. Mitchell was there as well. Daltrey followed it up. Spun around the tackle. Squeezed a handball somehow. Nice. Just quite, just didn't quite get it to Ambler. We've got another boundary throw in. So Tyron Reese is having a stretch on the boundary line. He's ready to go. Feels okay until yeah. you run. Yeah, until you run. Yeah, I'm 100%, but I can't run. <laughs> the ball to be thrown back in left half forward flank. 20 points the margin, 10 minutes gone. Final quarter, East gets the tap. Can't find a teammate. Coming in nicely was Ambler. He's taken ball and all right on the numerals 5-0. 50 metres from Terrellgan's goals. Just uh, on this, um, Hurrigan's on his own, uh, a kick away from this. Do you just match him up? I think it's... You you're not going to win the game with this. I actually don't think they've got the players to match him up. Terrellgan's got the most, the fittest bench going right now, so Tatnell, he's been standing here for a little while as well. He hasn't even moved and looked like doing a rotation. Well, well they, the dump kick like this just comes out, and Hurrigan yes. takes the chest mark. You've got to go one-on-one. -on -one. Well, Longbottom's got to come up. Well, it's not working because that's his uh, role at the moment. Yeah, I think you just go, you drag one back out yep. of the contest and roll the dice, play one on one. As the kick from Williton goes to the top nice. of the Philly, Van Awarden takes a strong mark in front of Matthew Hamilton of Bansdale. The right foot click to the top of the square, it goes. Low press! Takes the mark in front, he's got five, he's been the difference. I'm putting this down already. Well, he has not missed all afternoon. We've tried to put the commentator's curse on once. That didn't happen. Poppy's done it again, and we'll see what happens now. Directly in front, from about 40 metres, he'll kick from in the end. Five straight. He's just on fire. He could cha He could put his left boot on his right foot, and he'll still kick this. The big moment for the Moore Bowling Club. The legendary sixth tap is now there, and this could seal it. He hasn't missed all afternoon, and he still hasn't. At the 11-minute mark of the final quarter... Got six, has Dylan Lopez. He needs to shout his small forwards and probably his midfielders as well. A slab of uh, pickle juice. The fine one near the pickle juice on the way home because, um, and mind you, let's take nothing away from Dill. He's led well, uh, he's contested well, and he's marked well. And he's well. finished well. And he has. Just dead eye dick today, six straight. Great finish off there, and I think that could be just about it for Bansdell. That was my question box, and you've just answered it. 26-point lead to Terrellgan on the Harvey Norman Computers scoreboard. We've played, coming up to 12 minutes, 13-10-88 Terrellgan. Bansdale still under three-quarter time score of 9-8-62. So the ball's thrown back up. Uh, he's done it again. Van Awarden goes inside forward 50, out the back of the pack. Nicely done by Willen and got rid of his opponent. Takes the ball. He gets taken without the ball. Play on for the call. Good call it was, too. Kick from defence into the centre of Bensdale's City Oval, good tackle, swarm of Terrellgan players around the Bensdale ball holder, and the umpire will take control. 12 minutes into this final quarter, opening game of the year. A lot of opposition clubs will be having a look at what they might see in the next few weeks, and you'd be reasonably impressed for a first game hit out for both sides today. It's had a little bit of everything, for a little bit of everyone, as Bensdale from the stoppage, kick forward. Good contest at ground level. Terrellgan have got the numbers. Can they get out? They can. McMahon went searching for his teammate in Cooper Brown. Couldn't find him. And over the boundary line goes Skulters. And there'll be a boundary throw in. McMahon comes in to lend a hand. And right in front of our Gippsland live coverage of Gippsland League. Nick Lachino, Paul Carter. 
Rob Popplestone and this man, Daryl Scud Cooling. The Oakley's little kick off the ground did well to Tripodi. Now Daltrey kicks to the pocket again. Low prayers got underneath this one. Byron Vickery got a hand on it. And Hamilton, that's Josh of Variety, was happy to see it go over. Now Daltrey struggles with cramp. Happy with predictions, are you? I'll make a prediction now. He'll finish with eight. Dylan Lopez. Wow. He'll finish with eight. He's got enough. six, and we're at the 13 minute mark. Yeah, haven't you changed your mind? Ben's yep. were going to win by 40 points, and then, 30, yep, and then they were going to win at three quarter time. And now, Laprise, you've changed ships very close, uh, very quickly. Willardon gives a hammer out to Cooper Brown. The left footer on the right side for a left footer. Puts it out of bounds on the full, though. And you'd think now that the Red Legs need to start to take some risks. Yep. Straight up the middle of the ground somehow. Get some run and carry, but the problem is. The Tarelgan defence has been very good all afternoon. And Lando rolls in, kicks it to the near side. East will be the target. Hurrigan will fly. Can't complete the mark, but cause the spoil. Ground level there was Harvey. Squeezed it back to Mitchell. Twisting and turning. Gave it to Burn Jones. Inside kick. Goes to Harvey. Can mark at his chest. Harvey looks around in the middle. There's no one there. Cloak now presents for him. He squares it backwards to Blenheim. Now Blenheim on a half-back flank will get it to the fat side. Where Randall Stewart will run onto this one. He kicks it down the middle of the ground. Kieran Vickery was there. The forward Fentry kick. Does it find the target? Over the back. It's Bills. Can't complete the mark. McKenna goes to ground. Good tackle there by Halliburton. And Skulters was there. The ball bow pops out. Dorr will try to squeeze a handball back. Bills is under Ooh, pressure. Too high, Scud. Umpire calls free kick. Going to Bills, is it? Yeah, Reese is back on too for Bansdale. So Jesse Bills wins the free kick and 50. So not quite done just yet. This will put Jesse Bills on the goal line and he'll put it through 14, make it 15 minutes gone in the final quarter. Bills chips it over the top of the man on the mark and we have a goal. Yeah, they had to work really hard for that too and Reese was in the middle of all that as well as soon as he went back on and he's still having some struggles with cramp. But, you know, Bands will probably be very disappointed in the way things have turned out this afternoon so far and... Uh, a lot of that's attributed to their skill level at the minute right now, and uh, they're willing to miss chances inside 50, where Terrell would have taken every opportunity they've had inside 50. Terrell's margin is 20 points at the 15-minute mark of the final quarter. The Harvey Norman computer scoreboard has Terrell at 13-10-88, leading Ben Sale at 10-8-68. So they took some chances through the corridor, as Scud called for, and they got the reward, and they're going to have to sort of show a bit of fortune favours the brave, they say, and... And they're going to need to be brave as well as the balls bounce down again. Again, Bensdale go forward. Can they string two in a row together again? They're going to need to. Oh, well good, done, Reese. contest. Reese. he's back on the field. Into the corridor. They've got the numbers. Oh, geez, probably at the bottom of the pack. Jesse Bills could have taken that one. He waited when he should have went. And now Chance Daltrey with his... Uh, Maroon teammates left and right through Cooper Brown have got the runners. Cunico gives it back to Daltrey. And now they... Pincher forward from the right half forward flank. Yeah, Tripodi has it on the far side. Now he just slows things up. He just joining us. Logan Austin has done a hamstring in that third quarter. The kick goes inside forward 50, marked by Vickery. That's Byron. They've got the switch on. Cooper Harvey is one of those. Half back flank, nothing presents. So he goes back in board to Burn Jones. Quickly they play on. Hamble to long bottom. Back to Burn Jones. Handball forward to Harvey. Harvey goes by hand again. In Bordeaux, Tatnell, back to Harvey, to Mitchell, to Harvey. A good little link up. Inside 50, they've got numbers everywhere. Ben Reese takes the mark, plays on, and will kick under pressure. Oh. He had handballs everywhere. Yep. Had a rush Missed of blood. It. Had a rush of blood when he should have chosen a better option. They needed that, Paul Carter. 10 9 69, Ben Sale, trailing to by 19 points. Maroons 13 10 88, Harvey Norman computer scoreboard. 17 minutes played final turn. Okay, so now finding himself with the ball is Sammy Halliburton. Comes grandstand side. Hamilton underneath this and also Vanna Warden. Hamilton grabs the crumbs and kicks. And look at this. We've got Maroon players with plenty of pace and plenty of room. Hamilton feeds it over the top. I don't reckon you'll catch this bloke, or will you? No, you didn't, but he fed it off to Daltrey, who was under pressure. There's going to be a free kick for too high. And Daltrey from left half forward flank now. 
Where will he go? He's going to go for Dylan Lepraise. They come from behind. He's going to go to the top of the square. One on one. He's got six. Can he get seven? He can't. Spills to the front of the pack. Nicely taken. Neocleus. Too high. Neocleus. Play on's the call. It's gone through for a goal. It has to be advantage if it's Neocleus' free kick. He's calling it has it to be. And I watched the umpire. He hadn't even called time on, and Neocleus had already kicked the ball. So it was, should have been it was done a split done. second. It was bang, yeah. bang. Yeah. High yeah. tackle kick. That's a goal. Yeah. It's an advantage every single day of the week. It's up to the player to call the advantage, not the umpire. So all the umpire had to do was confirm with the goal umpire that yep. there was advantage. And it went through. And it went through. And we would have had a goal. But anyway, it won't matter. take two. It shouldn't <laughs> matter. And it doesn't matter. A goal. A nice goal. Harry, take a bow. That's your third of the afternoon. He's been the best small forward for me um, for this afternoon, only because he's been able to do it inside forward 50 and through the midfield as well and his work rate has been phenomenal so another reward there is third is a great return for a small forward and it's back out to 25 points in Terrelgan's favour. Harvey Norman computers scoreboard at the almost 19 minute mark of the final quarter. The Maroons 14-10-94 leading Van Zale 10 9 69. Well there's the seal up and it's very well done by the Maroons They've, uh, and hats off to them as well not many clubs would have put their hand up to come and play a week earlier than the season starting to travel to East Gippsland with a massive crowd here. Terrellgood said yes, and they're going to come away with the four points. As they go forward again, Daltrey's there, and here's Cunico. He's had a good opening and puts it through the middle. Jordan Cunico has had an awesome afternoon, and this is the Cunico that we've come to see at the higher level. Last year was a little bit interrupted with some injuries, but this is ominous signs for the rest of the competition. Yeah, spot on, Scott, and uh, he's had a fantastic afternoon, and what I've really liked about his game is just his ball use and his calm head. And what it does, it just gives the young players around you a bit of a lift too, doesn't it, Pop? So, yeah, it does. A and what he's really done is really shown the Gippsland League that Jordan Cunico is here to play this year. And now we're out to 31 points at the 19-minute mark of the final quarter. Harvey Norman computer scoreboard. Trailgan 15-10-100 to Bensdale 10-9-69. And remember, Bensdale were within two straight kicks, and they had an opportunity, didn't they, to cut the margin to one kick. Yep. It went missing, and Trailgan responded beautifully. So all credit to the visiting side today. We're apprehensive about what we might saw, given the notable outs in this side. But they've got a young side, coached by... Tommy Hamilton, whose young fellows are playing an integral part and will need to play an integral part of this Troy, team. Troy's, Troy's uh, Troy, of course. Tommy's playing. Tommy's playing. I got mixed up as and then, someone else did earlier. <laughs> and I get feedback. <laughs> <laughs> the ball inside Ford 50. Bensdale into attack. Nicely done. Kick around the body. Every kick for Bensdale at the moment just hasn't quite hit the mark. Jesse Bills on that occasion missed what he could have actually converted as well. So... Since halftime, when they were four goals at eight, they've added six goals to Paul Carter, but it's uh, a long way from being good enough. That's right. They're 10 10 70, trailing by five straight goals. Trogan 15 10 100. Hurrigan, who's been good in the all afternoon, kicks it high out wide. Ground level there was Ambler. Oof. Inboard kick's going to be turned over. Lockie Byrne Jones, forward handball to East, swings around from 50 metres. It's a wobbly helicopter, and it's going to miss to the Again. near side. Another minor score. Harvey Norman's computer scoreboard this afternoon. Find great deals when you upgrade to an HP Intel-powered laptop in-store and online for details. That is 10, 11, 71, Bansdale. Trailing to 15, 10, 100. 29-point margin late into this season opener. Standalone game of the Linter Energy Gippsland League. And you're listening to Gippsland Live on TRFM. All thanks to Harvey Norman Electrical Gippsland. Ty Harrigan, captain of the Maroons, would be happy. He's got a 100% strike rate as captain. Albeit his first game as captain. He kicks along to Hamilton. Back of the pack. Nicely done. Chance Daltrey rose beautifully. Gives ground. Keeps possession. And off they go. Lewis D'Angelo plays on. Link McKenna was closing him down. Goes searching for. I thought Josh Hamilton was taken front on. The umpire says play on. And Hamilton fights hard to keep the ball in. And will now be a 50-50 contest as the umpire assumes control left half forward flank. To Rogan leading. And Terrelgan attacking. They're 29 points up, 22 minutes gone. Ball down. thrown down again. Sorry, Scott. Burn Jones' kick was smothered. Goes backwards in the end. Williton couldn't keep it in the field of play. Just without the Angelo kick, Scott, too. If he just scoped a little bit more to his right, he had Brown on his own at centre-half forward. It's just one of those little things that uh, he kicks that one and he just puts another nail on the coffin. 15 goals for the Maroons when their forwards... 
Uh, entries were going to be an issue, but they've oh. answered that today. D'Angelo got around a couple, but then got ran down from behind. And Corbett, now it is at uh, Blenheim, sorry, with the tackle. Hamble's back to Matthew Hamilton for the Red Legs. Kick will be turned over to Jacko McMahon of the Tarogan side. On the wing now at the Bansdale City Oval. Inboard he goes. Huey Dunbar, full of run. Delivers the centre half forward. Scandrick will go up and take the mark. Ground, uh, defending player was on the ground and Scandrick rolls on. Gets it to Vanuard and oh. can't complete the mark. Rushed through for a minor score again. The margin now back to 30, uh, 30 points. You know, Tarogan just appear to be running this game out, don't yeah. they? They really do. Yep. And whilst, you know, the big fella for them, their ruckman in Tommy Hamilton has suffered cramp. He's been the only obvious one for Tarogan, where we've had three, four, maybe five players for Bensdale. They've just felt the pinch of the demands of this game as the Red Legs try to work it out of their defensive 50. They come grandstand side. The boundary umpire calls the ball out. Yep. Geez, it was close. But Cooper Harvey, although unhappy, will have to give that ball back. Left half forward flank, grandstand side. Tarogan into attack and leading, as we said, by five straight goals. 10-11 to 15-11. And let's see if Scud can't get another one on the board. In the front spot, long bottom. Well roved there by Cooper Harvey. Kick around the body. Carstairs marks. There's an open forward line. He just barrels it in. It's a foot race now. Hurrigan will lead the chase. K Kieran Vickery's there. Look at that. But Hurrigan's up to the task. And not only that, he can turn and find a tugger by foot. D'Angelo goes in board. There's oh. another cramping player. Dunbar gets it out wide. Chance Daltrey has it. Half forward flank. Inside forward 50 entry to Dylan Lopez. Can't complete the mark. Had to rove it. Handballed it out of bounds. Under pressure. Boundary umpire said let's ball it up. Uh, throw it in. Nice for a boundary yeah. throw in. Nice. It is a 30 point margin. Closing in on the final siren. Nice. Bansdale defenders are party poopers. They're not giving the deal with that opportunity. A couple of moments ago, Dylan Lopez was about to kick eight goals coming out of Boxer's mouth. He mm -hmm. still only has six. That's okay. Still a chance. Boundary throw in. Vanna Water in the front spot. Try to take it out of the ruck. Ball goes to ground. Cooper Brown was there along with Connor Ambler. And the umpire will ball it up. Just repeating earlier around the grounds. All thanks to Harvey Norman Furniture. An A-grade netball. Trelgan 43, defeating Bansdale 34. And Stacey O'Brien was the best on court. Our Gippsland Ozuza Ute player of the day. Tom Hamilton's been good all afternoon. Kick around the body. This time it's going to land on his opposition ruckman, Ethan East's chest. Gets it out to Randall Stewart. So Randall Stewart, right back pocket. Looks forward. Not a lot of room to move. The kick was mothered by Chance Daltrey, who hasn't been their worst today either. Every player has played a part, haven't they? Yep. There hasn't been too many weak links that are obvious to me in this Tarogan side. Nope. Well, I've got Chance Daltrey down for 20 disposal. Very nice. Very consistent performance by him. Nice to have him back in the maroon colours. Ball thrown back in. Lands on the 50 metre arc. Nicely done. Red legs run it through with numbers but this is where they're breaking down. It's 4 three v 3 oh. and when Hurricane's one oh. of the four, you know you're always going to be in a bit of bother. Good tackle. Play on would be the call. Play on is the call. Tarogan, just there's some tired legs out there at the moment from both sides. Just can't take the ball cleanly. Nicely done, Hamilton. Gives to McMahon. He's taken ball and all. Play on's the call. 30 metres from Bensdale's goals. Nice tackle by Skolters. Keep that ball in. As I say, 30 metres from the Red Legs goals and the slightest of angles with the home side at the 26-minute mark, trailing by five goals. As Brown comes off for a spell, Halliburton comes back on, goes straight down to his defensive post. Ground level there was Tate Marsh, lost it in the tackle. And in front of the scoreboard here at Bairnsdale City Oval, we've got another boundary throw in. Sky just around the grounds quickly for Harvey Norman Furniture, uh, Gippsland. It is a nine-point game, 28-19 to 19 in the favour of the Saints in the AFL. Thank you very much. Big moments this afternoon, all thanks to the Moore Bowling Club. Their legendary sixth tap. Free kick, McDonald's way. He's been serviceable today as well. Goes out the back. Uh, the big fella, Jacob Van Warden, will be rewarded the free kick. Just taken out of the contest. As we see another Bensdale player go down with cramp. Burn Jones on this occasion. Yep. Uh, there's been plenty of them today. McMahon wanted him to go backwards. He goes along the line. Out the back. Nicely done. 
He looks like he's got a bit of potential, this young fella, too. Taken high, Ooh, the umpire nice. fell for it. He lifted the elbow to get the high contact, but yep. got it nicely. What's the background there, Scub, with Scandrick? Uh, youngster. Yep. Um, he's probably only 19 years of age. Did uh, make the power squad. Didn't play too many games last year with Gippsland Power, but a young product of Tarogan. OK, goes forward inside, forward 50. Races on. Who's going to lead that race? Nicely taking uh, his opponent out of the contest was Neokle. He's picked up the ball, but then was taken by his opponent. Just 10 metres from Tarogan's goals. He's certainly got some tricks, Boxer. And just got to get it all it together. A lively sort. Yeah, yeah. lively. It'll take time. That's what youngsters do in this comp. So East got rid of his opponent, thumps the ball. But guess what? Straight to Dillard. Connor Ambler, who is on the opposing side, unfortunately, for him. Kicks just 10 metres from Tarogan's goals, and it'll be held in there. There's some tired legs there now. Ambler's cramping. In the, di <laughs> in the dying minutes. We're 28 minutes gone. Is D'Angelo still on the Box Hill list? No. No. Okay. So we've seen five goals in this quarter, and we've deep into time on now. Three and a half minutes gone of time on. Harvey ne Neocleus is with Casey Demons, the only player at this stage with the Maroons. Okay. Ha Cloak on the end of it. Got rid of it. Uh, will he get a... Free kick, or has it been called out of play? It's been called out of play, out of side of the ground, 65 metres from Tarogan's goal. And the only reason why I ask, he gets a consistent year with the, with the Maroons as well, so he's, that's not going to be a, a chop and chain no, that's like correct. it was last year. Yep. 28 and three-quarter minutes gone, final quarter. Ball back into the play. East was there, tapped it down. Working hard across there was McDonald. Maroons through Mitchell. He's worked hard for the red legs. Kicks it to the outer wing, though. And misjudges the field of play. Puts it out of bounds on the full. We've got our player rankings coming up after this too. Give you the uh, idea to, to give a few extra players a little bit of a vote. And then we'll have our rankings released during the week on our Gippsland Live socials. Kick goes towards Scandrick direction. Couldn't complete the mark. Now he picks it up on the hop. Delivers a kick inside Dylan. 50. Lopez! You pay that one. That's a mark. He takes the grab. Box is happy. He hasn't missed all day, LaPrez. He's got six. But now that Nick, you've called that he can't miss. I've called yep. that he can't miss. Paul Carter said he can't possibly miss. And now Nick Lucino, the most experienced of all of us, says he can't miss. Let's see what happens. So Dylan Lopez, tight angle too, by the way. We'll have to kick it about 40, 38 metres. Hasn't missed all day. Nick says he can't miss. The city end of the ground. He does not miss. He doesn't miss. You are kidding me. He has thrown it out of the water. Seven for Dylan Lopez this afternoon. And that is some start to this season. And there's the player that straightened him up. Uh, albeit, yes. you know, it's Dill's always been known as a lead-up centre-half forward. Played a little bit deeper, and we know he, his work rate is very good. And his, his leads have been impeccable. But he's a great afternoon. competitor too. He if he doesn't player. mark the ball, it comes to ground. And that's one of their biggest uh, contributions today from their forwards. Yes. They've all competed well, and their small forwards have actually rewarded that work. Six straight goals a difference with Tarogan 16-11-107. Leading Bensdale 10-11-71. 30-minute marks. Siren can't be far away. Harvey Norman computer scoreboard. Taking the ruck duties there was Max East. Although Hamilton tapped it down, McKenna was there, kicked around his body. Corbett will take the chest mark at centre-half forward. He looks up. Vickery will lead, but he goes to the lateral option where Cooper Harvey takes the mark. The man on the marks right on the top of the 50. Lower the eyes and on a lead was Longbottom and Hugh. And I don't want you to add any, na any letters into Hugh's name. I'll let you work that out in a moment. I don't want you to remove a H and like add an H e. And e, maybe. Please don't do that because Hugh Longbottom will have a shot now from 50 metres out. 31 minutes gone. Final quarter. He's side trailing. Longbottom's kick is low and Four. to the line touched. I think Hurrigan got a, a fingernail on it. Paul Carter for Harvey Norman Computers. Benzale 10-12-72, trailing Trogan, 16-11-107, 31 and a half minute played in the last quarter. Can't possibly be much time left. Six minutes of time on, six goals scored. McMahon changes direction. He's got Hurrigan. Hurrigan's got a heap of space, but he's in no rush, nor should he be. His side's got this game won. The kick was nicely uh, weighted. Found Skoltes. Skoltes was run down, but had time to go long. Yeah, oh, good fly from behind. Chance Daltrey took the crumbs after a contest from Connor Scandrett. And right in front of our Gippsland Live commentary position, there'll be a boundary throw-in. 32 minutes gone now. Tarelgan 16-11. Bensdale 10 goals 12. McDonald to do the ruck work for Tarelgan. And just like that, game over. Season opener. 
a big year almost looks certain. Yeah, absolutely. A great game to kick things off for the Olinta Energy Gippsland League. Sees Tarogan get the victory by 35 points. 16-11-107, defeating Bansdale on their home deck. 10-12, 72. It went 32 minutes the final quarter. We've got all the catch-ups with the best on grounds this afternoon. Our Zambrero goal today, and we'll wrap things up from the Bansdale City Oval. You've been listening to Gippsland Live right here on TRFM. All thanks to Harvey Norman Electrical Gippsland, 35-point 30 point victors to the Maroons.